What's up, Michael? How you doing? Hey, what's up? Another good week. How you doing, Gabe? Good, good, good. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Collection Wars. Yeah, it's going to be a fun night. Looking yeah, forward. yeah, yeah. It's going to be a super fun night. Uh, we got our buddies over at SitCast coming over. We got Sean and PJ. They're going to join us. Uh, we got a bunch of our buddies already on here. Uh, oh, Juan, yeah, oh, Juan, like, Juan says it's Diane's birthday today, so they're out <laughs> celebrating. So he'll catch you later. Well, a big happy birthday, Diane. Absolutely. Happy birthday, Diane. Uh, Jeff is on here. Scott. Hey, Scott. Epic intro. Every time I hear that intro, man, I, 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 I cannot thank you enough, Scott. I mean, it just like. Just Scott, you're up. our John Williams. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Sean, what's up, Sean? How you doing, bro? Uh, looks like Sean. Well, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but he, he finally framed that number one. Marcel's uh, number one Vader. Looks cool. awesome. Got Jeff. What's up, Jeff? Hey, Jeff. Um, everyone's just saying hi to each other. <laughs> All right. Jason. What's up, Jason? How you doing, bro? Um, got David. What's up, David? Hi, David. Uh, um, got Chris. What's up, George? Evan. What's up, Evan? How you doing? We got Joel. Which I'm sure we'll be talking about in yeah, in this episode quite a bit. Well, absolutely. Uh, we got Jose. What's up, Jose? Hey, buddy. Armando. What up, Armando? Flex SW seventy seven. Um. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, Matt. Uh, uh, uh Kelvin. What's up, Kelvin? Far from Death Star. What's up? Uh, uh, we got Michelle. What's up, Michelle? John, Robbie. We got Marcel in the house. What's up, Marcel? Hey, Marcel. Got Chris. So yeah. So guys, fun night tonight. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be a good one. We're we're gonna be talking. You know, yeah, talking shop. We're gonna be well. We're gonna be talking a little bit about you know just obviously six scale, right? We got look at that beautiful background. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to, we're going to chat. I, I really want to, want to kind of get, you know, get P PJ has been in this game, right. It, you know, with, the, with this whole star Wars, um, you know, podcast show thing for, for a little while. So I definitely want to chat about that because, you know, these kind of shows really did kind of change the, you know, the, the scope of collecting, right. Yep, it's crazy. So, and PJ was definitely one of the, first ones in there kind of um you know get, getting getting in there yeah it'll be fun to talk and it's good that, that we're gonna have his sidekick with us that's never been on you know he has supported us since our first episode you know Dude, sean yeah and he has such a great collection and yeah super cool yeah, man he's from my era too so i know really professional well. bmxer <laughs> he is dang yeah. super cool um cool well Without further, let's let's bring him on, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Let's bring him on. Yeah. What's up, PJ and Sean? What's up, guys? What's How going on, everyone? Uh, doing, hey, Gabe. Hey, Michael. Uh, great to be on. Uh, I know it was on like maybe how many uh, live streams ago, and it was it was a blast, and uh, yeah. you had a great panel, and uh, yeah. Thank you for having me, uh, having uh, having us on on the show, yeah. and very nice, uh, very kind words as well. I don't yeah, know if I was yeah. a pioneer of like all this, like you know, you're, but... in there. you're early in there. You're yeah. in there, you know, er early on with these kind of shows. You yeah. Know? So and you know what, PJ? Real quick, I just I just want to throw this in that the one thing, and I was actually talking to Sean earlier about it. The one thing, and and that's why we'll support a show like yours, is because like us, you keep it positive. There's no negativity, not a bunch of BS like other yeah. channels have, you know, uh, you care yeah. about, about your, your viewers just like we do, you know, so you're always yeah. welcome. You're always welcome, PJ. Oh, thank you, Michael. And and that's one thing I try to like uh, exert, you know, in, in the podcast or just whenever I'm live streaming, because I think that's what we do when we get on these shows or we, when we do these shows is to escape reality, especially like a lot of stuff that's going on right now. Okay. And you just kind of hate to leave that reality to come to this and then, there's all this like negativity and drama that is just spewing, yeah. you know, in, in this realm. And uh, this is supposed to be an escape. And uh, 
you know, I, I just want to just promote that and promote like some of these like artists, sculptors, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, channels, uh, you know, viewers, fans, you know, and uh, this, that's what it's all about. That's what I, I mean. Like, I'm we're not getting paid, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah. we're doing this on our own time and we're yeah. all setting it up on our own time. Like you guys, you know, when you do your shows, uh, it's, a, it's definitely a dedication that, you know, yeah. and a lot of hard work that you put into it that no one sees in the background. They see it from like from their point of view and yeah. they say, Oh, that's not too bad, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on and trying to, get guests on the show come come up with topics and yeah. logos and all these things the so editing that gabe does i mean yeah, yeah <laughs> trust me yeah i'm just just clicking buttons over here behind yeah me. come on yeah dude. don't nah, be like I mean, hey, and there's, there's been a few of them that you've had to put some serious edit time in there. yeah <laughs> uh, and there's one thing too is i always always you know, try to do is to have respect. I think that's sometimes they're slacking in, in some places, but definitely the respect that, you know, you would give to someone when you meet them in person. And you know, right. I feel like sometimes that gets lost in YouTube because tend to be keyboard warriors and stuff. So man, yeah. that, well said. Actually. Yeah. Cause it's crazy. Cause we're all part of this community. You know, I got to speak to Michael today for the first time and mm -hmm. we were talking like we knew each other for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just for the love of star Wars just brings everyone in the chat, just everyone on the shows. That's why it's so fun to have different guests just to you know yeah. see the mm -hmm. different collections and hear their background. Yeah, it's, right. it's usually a lot similar to ours where you just grow up just engulfed in the toys and the culture. And mm. it was, you know, a lot of us didn't grow up with the best family lives. So that was your gateway, your outlet. Mm. And then yeah. so that's going to recite, you know, recede inside you for the rest of your life. That's right. And, you mm. know, it's just yeah. wonderful. And, you know, we, we appreciate you just having us on today. Yeah, so it was, on, no, not, not, not a problem. Yeah, and definitely. And if you guys uh, don't know, obviously, um, PJ and Sean are, are doing the Sith cast um, mm -hmm. together. So make sure you guys go and subscribe. I put the link in the, in the description there. Um, they also have this really great community uh, family, right? I, I love that. I love that you put yeah. that in your, in your new logo, you know, it's a family. Cause that's, that's really what we, what we are. It really comes down, yeah. to, which is kind of funny because you, Sean, just like you mentioned, it's like, you know, we, we all kind of grew up with that same experience and it's, it's funny because whenever we have guests on and I bet you, cause I, I want, I want to hear PJ's story and I obviously I want to, I want to hear yours, Sean. Um, but it, we all have kind of very similar experiences with, with star Wars and the toys, but it, there's always this little tiny difference. Right. And like, mm -hmm. that's my favorite part is seeing what every single person kind of cared about right so for me it was like yeah i was playing with them but i i love displaying my figures there's some that just like like to rough them up and they're actually mm -hmm. playing with them there's some that like to focus on the vehicles some that you know the model so it just that's the best part is that you know the toys bring us together but each of us kind of are yeah have a little little niche and right? then you got some that like to blow them up with firecrackers and you're going what are you doing that's Han solo <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and that's okay too you know yeah. I mean? yeah. those are the ones that probably have like the most debt now because they're probably yeah. trying to regain all their old toys right? <laughs> yeah yeah they didn't keep from, <laughs> from their childhood uh, but cool man yeah so so yeah look, I, I i would love to hear kind of just whenever we have someone on collection wars you know mm. we always want to hear about kind of growing up and what got you into star wars and you know, kind of your Star Wars story, right? So, if you guys wouldn't mind, I, I, I guess we could go Sean first. And yeah, okay, I'll try to make it short and sweet. You know, <laughs> so you know, child of the age before beauty. No, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, be careful, PJ. I, I'm older than Sean. No, right. talking about me, so I'm gonna go first. <laughs> uh, no, just grew up a child as the '70s, you know, and then I grew up an only child, so. You know, I spent the majority of my time just playing with Star Wars because that's what I can remember getting first. I don't remember the matchboxes as a little kid. I remember the first Star Wars toys you're getting, mm -hmm. you know, and then you just get engulfed in that world. And I, I told this, I was trying to tell the story on Eben's show one time. It's like the coolest thing that happened when I was little. I came home from school and my dad 
was down in the basement and he took all my toys and he built every universe. He built Cloud City. He built Dagobah. He built Hoth with cotton balls. Like we had a big pool table and he just had it set up. He actually had like wires run and the X-Wing and stuff hooked on wires so I can fly, you know. So that's like, you know, that's the one memory that you'll just take forever. Like, man, my dad actually cared enough about me to build the Star Wars world. And plus you could kind of tell he enjoyed it too. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, I always tell everyone, you know, because we got to go to the movies to see see the original trilogy. You know, I remember walking out of Jedi and, you know, my dad kind of looks over at me and he goes, Luke's just a badass, isn't he? And I was just like, oh, my, you know, and that was the one time I think it resonated with me. Man, my yeah. dad loves Star Wars, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you, you've got that connection. And Is then, your mom still alive? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so. You know, you, you play with all the toys and then you finally make it into, into to middle school. And I, I clearly remember playing with the figures on the front steps of this middle school and these girls start walking up and they start making fun of me and my buddy. Yeah. So then that was like, I went home. I was like, I'm done with like playing with Star Wars toys, you know, and that's kind of around the time where I started picking up like BMX bike riding and stuff. So I focused on that. And then I get, like back in the like 94, you remember when they re-released the Power of the Force 2 figures? Yeah. And we and we all ran out and bought them because we're like they're going to be worth so much money, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're worth like three dollars a piece. <laughs> yeah, all right. The, so, the monkey face Leia. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So I, I did. I you know, it brought me back to my childhood of going to every different store like Walmart, Target. We got to find all these figures. You were on the hunt again because I remember you know, me and my best friend worked together, and we were like er, at lunchtime. Oh, we got to head over to Walmart. We got to go here. We got to find these figures. And then, so I collected those. And then I think Kenner re-released the 12 inch dolls. They were just like the ones where you open, open the flap and they had the window. Yep. yep. So I collected the entire set of that, all the variants. And I then, then I just stepped up from there and I was like, Ooh, hot toys, mm. <laughs> you know? So yeah. then I was actually looking, I was at work one day and I was online looking. I was like, Oh, I want to get a Christopher Reeve figure like Superman. Yeah. And then I saw the hot toys when I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Then I found out they made Star Wars, you know, mm-hmm. and this is when they were doing the original trilogy figures. Mm-hmm. So then that just started the journey. So mm-hmm. now it's, you know, hot toys. And now I'm really dabbling into prop collectible and, and helmets. And it's just a fun journey. That's cool. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to collect? Is there, do you have anything particular? Is it the I, six scale? I still love them because they're just, they're getting better as they make them. Yeah, they are. You know, but the hard part for me is I'm limited on space and I feel like with all the new Disney shows that are coming out, it's just so hard for me to keep up because I want to buy them all because they look so good. So I'm trying to, you know, I discipline myself by like, all right, I can't, he's awesome or she's awesome, but I I want this more. But then now I'm juggling, Ooh, I want to get some more RS prop master helmets. I want to get some Mm -hmm. more, you know, prop replicas. So but right now it's still six scale. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Sean, do you still have any of your, of your original vintage toys? Or no? I, I do. They're in the little Vader case. I've got them up in the attic, the loose ones. Whoa. Yeah. I know. He's like in the attic. Come on, brother. I mean, <laughs> you'll take all this new crap, but you'll leave your good <laughs> in the attic. I, know. I remember that Vader case too. Yeah. I have issues, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do right with collecting and, uh, yeah we had, we had great conversations sean and i today on the phone yeah. and i said hey hit me up let's talk for a little bit and yeah yeah like, like you said it was like old buddies talking you know and yeah it's awesome yeah yeah, yeah it was good. We, we were definitely clicking yeah what about you pj what, what did you how did you get into it uh well in terms of star wars i actually i grew up in the 80s i was born in 1980 so uh hopefully you guys don't do the math and <laughs> I forgot out the age. Um, but yeah, I grew up in 1980. Uh, I didn't really get exposed to Star Wars until I was like five or six. Yeah. And I remember going over to my uncle's house, and my uncle was a big Star Wars fan. He had like the VHSs and stuff. Um, I forget, it was the VHS. I don't know. There's VHS and Betamax, but VHS, right? Yeah. So um, I remember I was watching Empire Strikes Back. So he always. Pl- every time I went to my uncle's house every Christmas, he always played like a Star Wars movie. That was like, I don't know. That just, I don't know. Every time I think of Empire Strikes Back, I get into, it gives me that like warm feeling of like Christmas and cool Star Wars. And, you know, that's how I got exposed. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to watch the the original trilogy in the movie theaters, but that's how I got into it. 
And, you know, I, he definitely was like, you know, my number one uh, IP at the time. Uh, unfortunately, um, I was poor. <laughs> so uh, I couldn't really get any of the figures or a lot of the figures. Um, so growing up, I was, I could barely get like a, I don't know, maybe a Nintendo. So, and I think that's why I'm kind of making up for all those lost time with terms of toys and collecting with you know what's happening now so you know sean knows i'm like oh i picked up another life-size bust <laughs> oh look i'm a life-size bus collector now you know and, and no. things like that so um you know fast forward uh you know a little bit you know i went through high school girls all that stuff or lack of girls or <laughs> um trying to look cool or you know all that good stuff but then you know obviously i've always loved star wars i've always like empire strikes back will always be my my number one star wars movie of all time um in high school, though, I grew, I mean, I took a film class and that film class really made me appreciate what went into making Star Wars even more. And I thank you, Miss Highland. I, I, I'm not sure if you're still around, but, you know, Miss Highland, like she uh, really introduced me into appreciating how what what goes into making these movies. And Star Wars was one of the first movies she showed us. And she goes, okay, guys, I know a lot of people re like like Empire Strikes Back more, but f A New Hope or, you know, uh, Episode 4 really push the boundaries and the movie technology forward, you know, with all the, uh, you know, the sets that were made, all the things that I had to do to really, you know, um, make some of these beautiful scenes in terms of like, you know, the trench run and everything like that. And you know, that really, really like made me appreciate uh, Star Wars even more. So she, I remember her taking me into like Queens, like the class of Queens Astoria to like check out, like there's a film uh, museum over there and things like that. So I, like I said, like long story short, I, I appreciate Star Wars even more with, you know, with all the things that happened mm -hmm. um, that went through you know, into making that movie. And then uh, in terms of collecting 2000, fast forward to like the, the prequels. I, I like the prequels. I know I there's a lot of, people, you know, I know there's a lot of people that do not like this, the prequels or starting to like it now because of what's going on. Um, but I, I episode one was hard to get through. Mom was great. Uh, episode two was really, 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 really tough. Some of the dialogue was really tough to get through with through, through, uh, and episode three is like my second favorite Star Wars movie of all time. And I remember trying to get all like the, the lightsabers, all the toys back then. No! I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, th th but that was like, I know, like, see, the thing it's cool too is that, like, that's why I love talking to different Star Wars fans yeah. because every Star Wars fan story is so different from it's so unique from each mm -hmm. other. So that's why I think at Star Wars fans, even though we're so passionate about it, we have our own unique vision of Star Wars that differentiates from, you know, each other. And sometimes it gets in the way in terms of like, you know, like, oh, yeah, like, oh, uh, you're, you know, I like this better than that or, you know, things like that. But it all comes from a, from a good place. But yeah. And then I, uh, you know, uh, I at that time, I really, you know, I was I was newly married, so I really couldn't collect a lot. I know Master Replicas was around that, around that time. I remember looking at some of that stuff. I'm like, damn. I mean, I did get a couple lightsabers uh, that I was able to pick up, um, but I really couldn't collect that at the time. Only fast forwards. I, I, I remember picking up some Kotobukiya stuff, some of those statues to kind of like fill the void mm -hmm. and some like Hasbro, some Black Series figures. Some, I think I threw in some Funko Pops in there as well, but that never really like, you know, like I, I liked it, but it never really drew me into really like appreciating what went into like some of these, you know, into making some of these collectibles until I saw Hot Toys, right? Hot Toys really like blew me away. I remember going to San Diego Comic Con and I was like, what the hell are these things? Then I saw some of the sideshow Star Wars statues. I was like, oh man, how much are they? Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Until my friend uh, introduced me to payment plants, which is an evil thing to get introduced to. And uh, I was like, what do you mean? Wait, there's no interest? He's like, no, you just pre-order it and put it in a payment plan. So there's no interest. He's like, no. I was like, 
all right, they signed me up. And then, you know, my first hot toy figure was Boba Fett. My first premium format was Boba Fett because I'm a big Boba Fett fan. And, uh, you know, it's that transition. You go from collecting like smaller inch figures to, um, you know, uh, to hot toys, to statues. And then you start transitioning into like uh, the life size one to one um, replicas to, you know, statues to um prop replica stuff so i'm getting into i'm slowly transitioning to that kind of stuff it's that journey that we all take uh um to get to that 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 sweet spot of collecting yeah, yeah that and we love to enable everybody <laughs> yeah that too well we, mostly we enable well we try Each to other. enable yeah we all you know what ends up happening is like i try to enable someone but end up enabling myself <laughs> so. and then i end up buying something but yeah. Well, that, yeah, that seems to be, yeah, like the the thing, right? Especially with these shows, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's essentially we all become kind of friends. But it's, it's a very mm-hmm. tight community. And essentially we're all just enabling each other, right? Because yeah. you see these backgrounds and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait a second. Like, I I want that too. Like, that's such a yeah. cool thing, you know? So yeah, I, cool. I look forward to seeing some of Sean's stuff for sure. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so I mean, I, I guess I think that's a, that's a good little little transition to talk about. Just just briefly, I mean, obviously, just because we have you know we have PJ on, and I I really kind of wanted to to get his take on that, right? Because obviously, these kind of shows kind of really blew up early pandemic, right? I, I think that's really when it, they kind of started just like boom, 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 popping up left and right. Um, and I really did see, cause I, I was watching, you know, I, I, even though, you know, I, I had my star Wars replica channel that I would do unboxings and, you know, the reviews and stuff. Um, I, I always liked this format. I always liked talking to other collectors just because just in my circle, um, locally, you know, you just, my friends, my high school friends, my, you know, coworkers, my family, n- I don't have anybody to talk star Wars collectibles about. So, you know, so that was my only outlet is, is to watch the shows. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I remember uh, PJ was definitely one of the first people that I remember seeing on YouTube, just randomly, just, I mean, like just, you know, uh, random star Wars channels. And then I saw PJ pop up and I was like, Oh, this is really cool. Like, you know, I, I like this format. It's, it's kind of like a podcast, but we're talking about star Wars collectibles. I'm like, this is right up my alley. Right. So I, I guess I wanted to ask you, um, PJ, obviously because you you jumped in this pretty early on. Um, how have you seen it kind of transition? Obviously now everybody has <laughs> has a show. Right? Like, oh my gosh! Everybody! Holy moly! Yeah. Holy. Jeez. I know. yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. I, I would love to hear kind of your your experience with that. I, you know, not to get into any detail or anything, but just in general, kind of what got you into this style of a podcast. A, a podcast, yeah. Um, so basically, you know, not to I know someone will say I was a talker, so I apologize. Uh <laughs> but like it, no. but in the in the most part though, uh it also I started a YouTube channel, obviously, just to kind of do unboxing reviews of mm-hmm. um Star Wars stuff initially, but unfortunately the last yet I really put a damper in my love for stars for a little bit. So I was in that dark place. I kind of ventured out mm-hmm. to do other things. But uh, I was approached by uh, some uh, some team members over at Collectiverse, and if you guys don't know who, what Collectiverse is, it's like like this team of like different personalities and different channels that kind of like like you know collaborated to have one channel to kind of you know have specialties. Like I was a Star Wars guy, there was another like Batman guy and Marvel mm-hmm. guy and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, you know I was exposed to that, so we did kind of shows like this in the beginning. Where we did like, you know, we talked about, you know, I think I was a part of a Star Wars show back then called Sith Happens. So I was with my friend Thor then. So we talked about a lot about, well, we mostly complained about The Last Jedi, but we did talk about <laughs> Star Wars. Um, so, yeah. And then we did, uh, we actually did work uh, with a lot of like companies. With Not a lot of people knew that. Um, we did work with Sideshow. We did work with Kota Bikia. Uh, we actually had like a um, 
like a statue award show or like just a collectible award show. We actually had a booth in WonderCon, which we actually worked with Sideshow with. And, you know, they were, uh, you know, very kind enough to send us some statues to kind of like yeah. have uh, displayed there. Um, so, yeah, I started off in that route. And back then there wasn't a lot of people doing the, the video podcasting or the live streaming podcasting thing. So, um, I got exposed to that and then, you know, I went through, uh, you know, some six scale like podcasts. Um, I've always wanted to do a star Wars podcast. So I started Sith, Sith, Sith cast, but then, you know, it's, it's a great point that you mentioned, like, you know, before that, before pa uh, the pandemic happened, there wasn't a lot, you know, there was some, there was a, quite a few main ones, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, uh, live, live streamers. Yeah. And, uh, next, thing you know, it's just like, especially in the six scale community, it just, or it actually six scale and statue community, mm -hmm. just explosion. And it's almost like to the point where if you tune in, in every day of the week, there is like two mm -hmm. or three shows going on at the same time. And, and I'm going to be honest, like I'm scared that to the point where I don't know, like, there's only so much you could talk about, you know, in terms of like some of the collectibles. Uh, we like you guys. What I love about you guys that's different from ours is that you guys dive into like a lot of prop replica stuff, you know, a lot of prop replica stuff, uh, some uh, a lot of stuff from original trilogy. And you guys are positive, positive like live streamers. So you guys are doing such a great job. Eben the Collector is doing a great job. Uh, but you know, in terms of the other stuff, you know, not to knock them down, but you know, they do great stuff as well. But I'm not sure if there's going to be such an over a saturation of the hot toy statue mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of you Star Wars uh, podcasters out there, though, to be honest. So, yeah, in terms of um, the collectible realm, yeah. So, yeah, and I, I think that's a that's a great point because the the collectible world, and I'm sure, like six skill, mm -hmm. I think it's probably broader it's it's a little bit wider mm -hmm. because because they are a little bit more accessible right to, to mm -hmm. a wider audience yeah uh, once you start getting yeah into like the prop replicas and you know some of these some of these things the community just all of a sudden just kind of tinkers down just a tiny little bit because most of it are very small limited edition so mm -hmm. there is a smaller community mm -hmm. and yeah, absolutely. There's always going to be crossovers, right? There's mm -hmm. there only so many collectors out there mm -hmm. that are going to be willing to go on these shows. So mm -hmm. there's always going to be, you know, crossover. There's only so many products out there that anyone could talk about, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the one thing that me and Michael realized early on is that, you know, we obviously we knew there's there's all these channels doing the same thing right so we what were we going to do different is that we wanted to focus on the passion of collecting and what what makes you happy what brings you back to that mm. happy spot in your childhood that's why we don't focus just on star wars that's why we can bring in pretty much i mean any we we're, we're open to any type of collector that's yeah. why we want to bring people in from you know from people that worked on you know in star wars or you know the the model makers or the mm. sculptors and all that because again i think what we're trying to do is we're trying to pull out those heartstrings right and i yeah. think that's the one thing that me and michael early on said that's that's our goal like our yeah. goal is to make it positive because it's what makes it makes people happy not just to show off like hey check check this out like look we all have the same toys, right? I mean, because we all do. Yeah. Uh, it's all mostly, you know, about, you know, make, making people feel good. But, and then that's the one thing about your shows, PJ, that I, again, every time I watch you, I always, whenever I, I'd be like, man, PJ is such a cool guy. He just like, seems like, you said, <laughs> well, you, you did, you, you, you seem, you never came off as like braggy. You never came off as like, Hey, mm -hmm. look at look at the stuff I have. You know what I mean. And and that's I think me personally, that's what I appreciated about about you and your personality. And again, that's why whenever you had something, I would always be like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna watch PJ and, and whatever he does. You know. Yeah. So, I was gonna say I actually had you on the show once, uh, Gabe. Yeah. It's one of my first uh, sh uh, Let's Talk shows. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a great conversation as well. So yeah, uh, thank you for the kind words. Uh, I try to. I don't know. If there's. I'm sure there's some haters out there that he's all right. 
<laughs> yeah. right. um, you know, but I'm so happy. Like, you know, Sean's my co-host, uh, and uh, it's just, you know, it's great. You know, I love this community. I, it's, you know, it's one thing. Um, it kind of like that's why I love one thing I love about your shows. Like you and you and Mike do a great, great job. Um, like you, you do the same thing. I think that's what a lot of things too is like positive people just kind of track to other towards other positive people and um you guys are filling in the in the hole where not a lot of people get like talk about like we don't talk about like some of the things that go into making some of the the prop public stuff and you know some of the other things that like you know you guys had some 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 guests from lucas lucas uh arts right i mean lucas films we've had several of them actually yeah so and it's great and every saturday night i have my phone on my chest and i'm just like listening Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I, yeah, so great, you know. But thank you, I really appreciate it. But cool. But yeah, again, I just I, I had to touch on that because, like I said, I think you've seen this kind of evolution. And where where do you see where do you see it now? Like where it, I want to get your perspective. Like how do you see kind of the this well, as far as well in terms of like some of the, like well the statue also is kind of like the statue community is kind of smaller. Uh, I think in terms of like the Star Wars realm, uh, there's a lot of uh, podcasters out there and they all bring something different to the table and something, you know, in terms of different opinions. Uh, but I I see a lot of people like really like just kind of like jumping in, uh, in into making a channel and starting because they see it and they're like, oh, that's I could do that, you know, and they start jumping in. But the thing is, like, I see a lot of things uh, where they kind of talk about the same thing. There's no originality, you know, there's no, it's kind of saying like, Oh, we're going to talk about hot toys and the six scale community and all these new releases. I mean, as a person, how many times can you listen to someone kind of like praise a, a collectible or bash a collectible, you know, at some point it's just going to be like, all right, all right, let me try to turn on something else, yeah. you know? And uh, for me, it's like, I, you know, Sean and I, we try to do something different every week in terms of Sithcast where we talk about theories and we kind of talk about everything, right? Uh, in the Star Wars realm, we don't leave like no stone unturned, right? Like if you are a prop uh, replica collector, we'd love to have you on. Uh, six scale collector, we'd love, you know, things like that. Or we had artists on, you know, we like collect, uh, you know, artwork, we'd like to have you on. Yeah. As long as the stars related, we'd love to have you on. If you love speculating, let's let's have you on. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it's it's kind of like a good variety of things. But um, but yeah, I'm not sure how it's gonna go, man. I feel like everyone's jumping in. At mm -hmm. some point, even the viewers are jumping in and making their own channel. So yeah. it's like now, it's like your viewers are becoming YouTubers, and it. I don't know. It's just gonna. I feel like, and I'm being honest here. I just, in my opinion, I could be totally wrong. I just feel like at some point it's just going to be like an oversaturation of live streamers. Mm -hmm. um, and if your viewers are becoming live streamers, then who's going to watch you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. My suggestion uh, to just jump in real, real fast to, to what you're saying right there is definitely, I think everybody out there getting into their own um, uh, show or podcast is to definitely keep it positive. But most importantly, if you want to make it be original, yeah, come up, this one with your own type of thing and and try not to lead off of other people's things. And and it's hard, you know, but one thing that we've done is, you know, we've supported everybody, obviously, mm -hmm. that that, uh, that we know that have started up, you know, and we, we definitely want to see see people do their thing. You know, like you said early on is we're not in it for the money, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, just keep it original. And, and uh, that's definitely something that Gabe and I yeah. kind of keep on doing. So. I hope that a lot of like live streamers that, that get in, I'll get to start to do this. You know, I hope they realize there is no money involved here. You know, yeah. it's, yeah. there's very well, little, there is, there is, there is this one guy that just went and bought himself a Lamborghini and you know, <laughs> there is. <laughs> oh yeah. And he was, I love to know what kind of channel he has. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was getting ready to do, do a, uh, on my star killer 77. I, mm -hmm. I just hit 3000 subs and I was going to do a video on my new car, but, but Gabe's a good idea. So. <laughs> I just wanted to thank everybody for the almost 3,000 subs. And, um, <laughs> so, don't uh, say nothing, Gabe. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to thank everybody, the viewers. And, uh, I'm not going to go there. But, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, it's because of you that I, I went and yeah. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, and I think, yeah, I think, I think you're, you're right on the money. Like, I think as a community, we all support each other and we're all going to be like, yeah, they, like, of course, like, you know, the more Star Wars content, you know, mm. obviously the, the, the better, right. If you could mm. tune in, you know, like you said, PJ, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, and every, every night you, you could tune in. That's great. But yeah, you're right. Like, uh, I'll give you an exa- a perfect example. You know, the Rancor, right? When it was like the Sideshow Rancor, even the Regal Robot Rancor, right? It was like every everybody was just talking about that same subject, right? And it was like... Oh, uh, yeah. And then, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, there's like five or six, you know, different shows just kind of always just talking about the you know the ring core the ring core the side show the regal robot the, you know and it and yeah you, how many takes can you really you know get from different people that you haven't already heard you know and i just want to chime in real quick yeah no that's great yeah there's there's different people like you know having their opinions on our rank or like right now for example queen studios is a big thing now there's a big news but I see a lot of, uh, you know, channels kind of like, you know, intermingling. Mm. But then it's almost like they're intermingling in every show. And what ends up happening is that they're the same opinion almost every show. And 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 that's, that's great. And you guys, like I said, I'm very supportive in the channels. But I like to kind of see a little bit more diversity and difference and stuff. Like, I that's my suggestion and my uh, advice to anybody that wants to do uh, a channel. I'm not trying to discourage anyone but just be different to kind of stand out from the rest you know let me just let me say i i was just did a show i i don't do them very often but i was mm-hmm. was happy to do a show with uh, gabe um alex the espanol channel How, what, mm-hmm. what's his channel yeah star wars and espanol yeah and i want you guys to know that it was probably one of the the best mm-hmm. shows that i've ever done you know um mm-hmm. I, I mean i had such a blast he was telling me some of the things that we're going to do and i just told him don't worry about telling me. Just do what you got to do. And I had a blast. I I yeah. had a really good time. I can't wait yeah. to see that episode. It and was yeah. fun. And and again, it's different takes, right? Yeah. So I've been on on maybe like three three or four like Spanish mm-hmm. um, Star Wars channels, and it just it's so interesting to kind of see the the dynamic and and mm. I I don't know. It, it really is. It's it's refreshing. It's refreshing yeah. to get different takes. And you know so. It's, I, you know, I, I get invited to, to be on, you know, on, on channels a lot. I mean, I, I really do. And I, I don't want to sound like, oh, like, yeah, I, you know. <laughs> okay, Gabe. <laughs> okay. It's been, right. you know, I mean, no, but, no, but, but, but I do. And here's the thing, like I, the first thing I usually will do when I get invited on, um, I'll, I'll say yes. I'm going to go on any channel regardless. But the first thing I do click on, you know, on their channel and I, you know, I kind of want to see their format, right? Because I, I don't want to jump in there not knowing, you know, what, what they're about. And, you know, there, there's some, there's some channels that I've, I've been a guest on and they've had, you know, 70 subscribers, you know what I mean? Like less than a hundred subscribers, you know, and sometimes those are kind of the, the funnest ones because they might not be doing kind of the same format as we are, right? They're, they're very, very small, very kind of up and coming, you know, channel. And it's always just interesting to see, um, you know, the, these, uh, these younger, the younger generation, because it really is, you know, sometimes it's, it's these younger, younger, I don't want to count kids, but mm-hmm. they're younger people, you know, doing these channels. And uh, I love to hear their take on, on Star Wars, because yeah. it, it's con, it, it is a contrast to my take on Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So I, it almost feels like it challenges me, right? Because I'm like, oh, like, yeah, you know, I don't agree with kind of your your fandom, but I, I love it. I love to hear like, you yeah, know, how how these new this new generation sees Star Wars. Yeah, they just get introduced to it so much later than we did. You yeah. know, we see it for what it was and then they've just, they get the, the spin on it, I guess, you know, with the prequels mm-hmm. and then, you know, well said, the well sequels said. and stuff. So mm-hmm. we don't see it that way. And it's weird. Like even like trying to watch book of Boba, mm-hmm. you know, we're old school. So we're like, Boba Fett's got to be a certain way. 
But even when we were doing Sith cast, we do try to see the newer generations. We, we try, we say we try, we may not do it all the time, yeah. Yeah. but we at least try to see it from their point of view. So we're not just kind of bashing the way mm. they look at it. We mm. don't want to be like, well, this show sucks because Boba Fett's not a badass, you know? Mm. Yeah. And they're like, well, I like Boba Fett, you know, mm. but we're like, well, why do you like him? You know, so, <laughs> that's me. That's, that's me. Seriously man. though. So we it's do damn we, problem. That's why I say, you know, we try because we do, we just try to see it from their point of view as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's the interesting part about the, the newer generation doing these channels. Cause it's, yeah. it, it's yeah. a different spin on it. Yeah. I mean like, and I, like I said, be unique. That's like the number one thing I always like recommend to anyone doing this. Uh, you know, I actually listened to a podcast and they're a smaller podcast, but the girl, uh, shut up. It's Laura. <laughs> she's been in a lot of like John Roca's uh, live stream. She's been on, what's that uh, competition that they do um, that I forgot the word they challenge each other and ask questions, like really hard questions. Anyway, uh, shut up. It's Laura. Like that's her name. And uh, she does a, a forced toast podcast. And I love listening to them. I may disagree with some of the things that they say, but I love it because not only are they real, but they drink and they burp and they're like, <laughs> really like they're cursing and they're like, Oh yeah. Like, and I'm like, they say Mike, Michael's stuff. kind of people. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. The fact that they're, they're just like, they're different in that kind of way. And, and that's what I like to tune into. I don't want to tune into someone in Monday, watch their show. And on Tuesday, they're on a different channel, someone else's channel doing the same exact thing. Yeah. It, it's just, then you're, you're just beating the dead horse all the way till Saturday, you know? Yeah. No. Till Collection Wars comes on, and I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, just be different. That's all I'm saying, and I'm very supportive with uh, any channels. You know, as long as you don't bring drama, <laughs> you right. may come on our show and and just have uh you know have a good time. So yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, man, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Well, there you go, guys. Um, let's how about let's look at let's let's take a look at some some cool stuff. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Yeah, you, by the way, you, Michael, I love love that diorama. Mm -hmm. Thank Who you. Who makes that? I've been. I'm like, sorry. I've been. I know we were like doing the topics, but <clears throat> sorry to go off the uh, rails here. But I, who makes that? Yeah, this was was uh, built by uh, Legacy Arts. Legacy yeah. Arts, right? It looks like, le yeah, 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 yeah. We just took the 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 basic display respectfully and. Um, made it a complete um palace so yeah you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit we'll talk okay yeah i'm sorry i just i was just i was it, admiring it, it, it. it dude it's so yeah, sick because it, it, i'm so yeah. used to like your the, your other setup yeah it, it, <laughs> yeah 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 we're always changing it up in here so it's and it's the scale is great i mean if you think about it like michael is like literally pretty much touching that thing so i mean just okay. you could tell i mean michael's not not a little guy. Yeah. You know? So hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what's so, what's so crazy? Is what yeah, yeah. What's so crazy is when you when you look in here, it just it goes so far back. It goes. So I'm six feet tall. So let me just tell you guys, from right here to the back behind Jabba back there is almost five and a half feet. Wow. Wow. It um, looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, such a good yeah, job. That is so beautiful, man. I love the little details he puts in the pillar at the top above R2. Oh, yeah. And that's just nice. Yeah, Yen's, him, his family, because, you know, that's what's awesome about him. His family, his father-in-law, you know, sews the pillows and does a, a fantastic job on the lighting. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you've got Yen's putting all the, you know, the details and, and the carving and the painting and, and the... And what was really cool is, you know, Gabe knows. I mean, it was this show, Collection Wars, where we commissioned this piece. We had, uh, you remember that, Gabe? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We, yeah, yeah we, we were talking we, about it. And then we were talking about the Rancor Cave. Remember, I was like, it would be cool if yeah. we had Job on top and the Rancor on the bottom. I think, you know what it was? It was we had Matt on, right? Matt, which yeah. you guys had on. on Matt has, on, yeah. One of you, like, yeah, Matt yeah. has um and with yens and we were talking about that and i was like how remember he was like how cool would it be if it was like underneath 
Yeah. And Jen's like, we could do that. <laughs> Michael's like, yeah. We're going to talk. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then we end up doing it. Yeah. And it's, I don't know how long it's been now, but, you know, keep in mind this Jens is in Germany, but, you know, he made a, a trip down here to the States and, um, you know, hopefully he's going to be a neighbor in the near future, but, no, no. but uh, it, it, it's a good thing and a bad thing if he becomes a neighbor, me and Sean <laughs> this morning, because, uh, yeah, it, it just, I don't think would be a good thing, but he just, you know what we can do? And I'm like, no, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I, I love the detail. Michael, can I, sh can I show some of these pictures already? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, for example, like the this Tauntaun. Like, yeah, it's a so six-scale Tauntaun head that just oh mounted God. there. And yeah, like, that, that was Joel that did that. That's Joel, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. And I love the collaboration with yeah. all of these artists. Because yeah. you guys, you right? You collaborate yeah. with with Joel, with, um, uh, oh my God. For, um, there's, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's going to come back to me right now. Once I look at, at the figures. Yeah, have you yeah. seen, have you seen Joel's new Wampa, his six scale Wampa? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, yeah. I want that. It's Joel, right. I see you in the chat. Hit yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. This is like, collecting to the next level man like that's some like the the the, the sculpt the the details on like some of these pillars like wow oh yeah mm -hmm. for sure he's holy good. moly man yeah and i don't know how many figures are in here but there's about 16 of them and they're all they're custom the ones that you're looking at right now are custom made figures and mm -hmm. and um yeah we had a couple Gosh. people Cash, yeah, Cash did did did, did some of the uh, a good amount of the figures, and then mm -hmm. I had Joel um, do some additional work on them. Um, but but props to Cash, you know he he uh, you know he's getting it down. But um, Joel just just killed it on a lot of these things, and he worked wow. you know all hours of the night to do stuff like this one right here. The stories that that he you know making this this the size noodles i mean it's just like i was so honored that he he donated this piece to me and he's just one of the the most good-hearted gentlemen that i've ever met in my life to be completely honest with you and i'm not just kissing his ass because he's watching i'm being fucking <laughs> because i mean th th this is a a guy that you know loves what he does and he's done a lot for the community already he's he's a very giving uh individual and i hope nobody takes advantage of that guy because yeah he'll, he'll he'll do anything for you and it's crazy because i'll tell him something and, and then i was telling him no bullshit i was telling him about a week ago about um a character look so pj you i think maybe no but i know sean knows and gabe knows my thoughts about a lot of the the, the newer films and whatnot <laughs> I, I don't, even though I don't particularly like a film, it doesn't mean I don't like some of the characters. Like I absolutely couldn't stand, you know, episode one, but I mean, it would have really been bad if Darth Maul wasn't in there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I thought he was a badass character, but yeah. that, that being said, the smallest, coolest character in the newer movies was this guy right here. And his name is Babu Frick. <laughs> Babu. Oh, oh wow. wow, that looks great. Wait, Whoa. he that that's custom? Hey, yeah. hey, this is not only custom, holy this thing was, was commissioned and built. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna throw it out there. And I would have to say about two days. Yeah, Joel's a workhorse. Yeah, he is. Oh, geez, man. Oh, and look at he has look at that. Looks great. Yeah. Oh, boo -boo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, so check it out, guys. So every even my wife. Said, hey, how are you going to display this guy? And look, I mean, little custom look stuff. Look at that like details, that. too. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Damn. I, I love this guy. And that's technically life-size, right? Yeah, this is life-size. That's one, one to one, right? Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Damn. And he, he did the little welders and stuff. And the, it's just. Damn. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And so. I think Sideshow should freaking hire this dude. Oh, man. And just, the, yeah, the paint scheme. I mean, hey, look, just he told me, he goes, yeah, I used a glove. For this, and if you look in the movie, I mean, it's like right out of the movie. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So it's like oh. he walks around like reminds me of Close Encounters the Third Kind when that guy's 
busting out the window and throwing pots and plants and stuff mm-hmm. to build that tower inside his living room. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what Joel does when he's making a six <laughs> figure. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but I just wanted to say thank you so much, uh, Joel, for everything that you've done. You mm-hmm. know, not just for the six scale community, um, all the viewers. Oh wow! But yeah, I mean, the eyes, hey. the detail in the eyes. Thank you, Gabe, for pulling that up. Damn, that looks sick, sick man. Looks great. Good job, Joel. Yeah. So I have a life size um, separate from my Don Post. I've got a a C three PO head that, um, and the next deal my plan is to get. Um, Anthony Daniels to sign that one, but I thought it'd be really cool to display him with that C-3PO head with the eyes lit yeah. on C-3PO and have some wires coming out of the underneath. That'd be pretty cool. Well, Michael, you can get that signature in a month. We'll get yes. you down. We'll get you down yeah. to Tennessee. I'm going to probably do that, bro. I'm nice. Do that. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely meeting up. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm probably going to get kicked out of this, uh, out of, for saying this, but Joel, can you make a Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> oh, Gabe, get rid of him. <laughs> hey, I just got to ask you something. Are, are you being serious, though? No, I was, well, sort of, so, somewhat. I mean, do you, are you a big, okay. See, you remind me of our other friend, Matt, Matt's collection. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> See, here's here's yeah. the thing, too, is that I like everything Star I, I mean, I've been I through know. The uh-huh. only thing I I'm sorry, and I'm not trying to offend anyone. The only thing I can't get past is the Last Jedi, the Last Jedi and, and Rise of Skywalker. Or to me, just I can't. It just hurts me. It's like a traumatizing experience, you yeah. know. Yeah. So I I can I can't watch those movies at all. Like I I've seen, uh, <laughs> you know the the Christmas special. The you know I've seen all. I I watched the first Clone Wars movie, which was like oh my gosh, like so Ooh, pain- that was tough, so painful to get through. But I still liked it <laughs> yeah. because I must. I love everything Star Wars. You, you know, know what? We, if we all like the same thing, and Matt's my boy, he knows I'm kidding mm-hmm. with him. Yeah, my boy, Matt. <laughs> you know what? That guy can take a beating, and he's still coming back. I love Matt, <laughs> but, but but I can tell you what though, he, he's not afraid to. You know, just like you, yeah. you know, it's okay. We can't all like the same thing, you know. Yeah. What I mean? So yeah. I mean, that would make things really, really boring. You know, we all have, our, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I tried. I really, really tried. I dissected Last Jedi. I dissected Rise of Skywalker, and I just can't. You know, That's, I just can't. You know, I was the so. same way. I tried. I even tried to watch the Last Jedi again, like a mm. couple months ago, just Ugh. on Disney Plus, and I was just like, "Oh, I can't do it. God, I can't. It's why? just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just can't." Just I actually, I actually like the Force Awakens. I don't. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't mind the Force I, I, Awakens. Me too. It, I got, yeah. I got caught up in the hype. Sure, really right did. when we were, you know, I, I thought <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were bonding. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, tell me, tell me, you didn't get, you didn't get kind of hyped up when you saw Han Solo in that trailer go Chewy. We're Dude, home. It was. Oh my awesome. god, that it was, was awesome. That, that that sold me. That yeah. scene. Uh, sold me. That's what they wanted is to sell you, and they did. Yeah, but and then know. not only did they sell you, but Han Solo sued him for breaking his back in that same movie. Yeah. Oh, that same. Yeah. No, but no, that, that's a good movie. That's not a good movie. Yeah, I mean, look, we got all the original characters back in that first film. Like, even though Luke, yeah, only very briefly, but mm-hmm. I mean, dude, I mean that that was such a cool thing. And I remember speaking of celebration. So I was at that celebration, the 2016 one, when they, when that first trailer came out, when that first trailer hit. And I was pretty close up front when it hit. And I kid you not, I like, there's the whole, I don't know if you guys were there, but the whole interior of that stadium just like blew up. It was just like, and I like turned around, there was people crying. Like there was people like, (laughs) I was like, Oh my god, what's going on? And then all of a sudden the actors come up on stage and I'm like, oh my god, what the hell? I'm like, what's going on? And it was just in, I think I might actually have a video of that, but it's it's insane. Yeah. Um so after that I just I was I was all in. I mean Disney had me all in 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 you know, um and then obviously The Last Jedi came out and I was like mom mom. Yeah, and I was in celebration for when they were promoting The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. And everyone was really excited for that. I think I was. Uh, I was, I was. I, me too. Ryan Johnson came out like you know we're all like they're all lining up to, <laughs> to get into like the main uh, stage for the main panel for Last Jedi, 
and he came out signing all the 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 badges for everyone. And it was such a cool feeling, you know, like to be in celebration. I know celebration is coming up uh, pretty soon, but that it's that essence, right? Like that you're filled with a whole bunch of like Star Wars fans. But yeah. were um, you getting an autograph when he was out there? No, I was like, the line was so long, man. I was just like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep on. Going. <laughs> There's so many other things I need to check out first, but. Um, I remember Rise of Skywalker. I was in in the panel when you know when you heard the Emperor's laugh and everyone, like you said, uh, Gabe, like everyone blew up. Like, wow! Yeah. I was there. Yeah. yeah, and then the leaks happened. The, mm-hmm. the script leaks, or like, yeah, and then, I remember that. And you didn't know if they were real or not. Yeah, I read it. I was like, yo, this is. Then I was watching the movie, and you're like, oh shoot, <laughs> this is what's <laughs> happening. I'm like, oh no! And then the ending, I was like. Oh no, she said that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, what did yeah. she say? Oh, I Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather yeah. not say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who are you? Yeah, Ray, Ray who? Ray Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it, is. it was just such an unnecessary scene, right? Like it was, it was, all the movies were. The movie was no and. Look, and here's the thing. And again, I, I may catch a little heat, but I enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I liked it. And the reason why I liked it is because I, I like the Emperor. The Emperor is one of my favorite characters mm-hmm. in the whole series. So to see him kind of back all creepy and like, I I, I like that. And the mm-hmm. fact that Ray ended up being... A Palpatine, I actually and I like that because it was even though there's already a lot of rumors about it and all that stuff. I think once once it it hit in the movie theater and you know that we found out, I was like, oh wow, all mm-hmm. right, that's crazy, you know that that's cool. But yeah, that last scene, I'm I mean, so like that, yeah, it's like they almost said that the Palpatine was sexually active. Is what you're telling me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Pretty creepy, man. No, you gotta, you gotta handle handle your business. <laughs> and it's like they try to trick you with the title, you know, the Rise of Skywalker, and you're thinking, oh, Ray's gonna be a Skywalker. Yeah. yeah it's complete opposite. Yeah. Or Luke's coming back, like, or yeah. like has yeah. more of a role in it or yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah, I just think that, like, unfortunately, they just. You know, I wish they went with uh, what George Lucas wrote, his like his uh, his story for Episode Seven, Eight, Nine, instead of like looking at that and looking at the hate of the prequels. They go, eh, a midichlorians at the door. Like, you know, let's not do that. So, so, so I'm not too familiar. Like, I'd never kept up with it. Can you mm-hmm. give us like a quick summary? Like, just like what? So, what was the original script? Is it more of like the whole Mara Jade and like? Um, so the, the, I think the original script, like, I think the main, main bad guy was Darth Talon and Mm -hmm. they involved a lot of like the midichlorians and I I think Jason Skywalker was supposed to be like, you know, like Kylo Ren and some like, you know, Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there's like bits, I mean, like I would love like seriously, just like someone like steal that, that's like that, that script or that like outline. Yeah. And just publish it out in like Reddit or something like, because yeah. I you know to me like okay a lot, a lot of people may disagree with George Lucas in in terms of the prequels, but if you really look at the storyline in itself, the storyline's great. Like his story, like his storytelling is great. His directing and you it's know scripting. script writing, yeah, you know, is kind of eh. But if you think about it, like one person brought down the whole Republic and the Jedi Order and manipulated everyone, including Anakin Skywalker. You know, mm-hmm. like he was like grooming Anakin to be his apprentice. Yeah. And I mean, thankfully, the Clone Wars, some of the animated shows kind of like helped the prequels get a little bit more love. Yeah. Um, but in the most part, like. I kind of wanted to see George Lucas's uh, version of seven, yeah. eight, nine, and just finish it off. Yeah, yeah and just finish it, and then do whatever you want after that. Do yeah. whatever you want. And Luke would have been, oh yeah, um, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like what we saw. So it was so wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like, and no offense to anyone that likes the sequels. I'm so sorry. I'm so no. jealous. First of all, yeah. that you love the sequels as much as I. Yeah, I mean, as, yeah, as much as other people, but yeah. 
Hey guys, just real quick, um, Gabe. So my son is here, just pulled up to the house. He's leaving early in the morning to the Coast Guard. So you yeah. guys, he's dropping his vehicle off. I just want to go give him a. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And, I, and I, you guys continue. I'll be right. Yeah, yeah. You okay. say, give him a, a big hug from all of us. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, and you know what's really cool is, um, I think I I told Sean this morning he's flying to do some schooling for like nine weeks and right outside of San Francisco, uh, mm. right past Lucas Valley Road. So oh. I'm, I'm going to go visit him in about two weeks, and uh, I'm oh. going to go go knock on the door over there at Skywalker Ranch. <laughs> Tell him to bring some bail money. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got, yeah, but, you got that, my number. You got my number, Mike. I do. And you're in Cali, so hopefully that'll work. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. But, yeah, man, I totally, I totally get you. Yeah, with the, with the whole, and it's funny because I think me and you, PJ. So we're we're the same age, right? We're yeah. born around the same same time. So I'm sure we have kind of the same same experience regarding the films. Um, and I, I remember I was probably maybe like a junior in high school, or maybe a no, not a senior. I think I was a junior when Episode One came out. I think around that, or yeah, so, I don't know, somewhere around in middle I think, in high school. But, yeah, yeah. I remember going out and like collecting all of the Pepsi cans. And I remember collecting like the TV guides mm-hmm. for any of you guys that, <laughs> that remember TV guide, right? The TV guides, the people mag, all the magazine covers, um, the Taco Bell, to- right? Like every little thing that they were pumping out with episode one. And I actually worked at a movie theater when that movie came out. And that's the first thing I told my boss. I was like, Hey, if I upsell this many things, can I have that episode one poster? And he's like, yeah, absolutely, man. So that, so I needed to get that episode one poster, the teaser, right? The one with the mm-hmm. Darth Vader shadow. And I remember I was an usher, so I'd have to go clean the movie theater after every, every show. And I had it timed. I had my little schedule and like, I had it timed that I would go into the theater right when the duel of fates like picks <laughs> up, like yeah. and, and, it, and i would sit there and i would just wait for the movie to kind of end and just kind of pretend i'm <laughs> the thing, which i'm not because there's still a big chunk of movie left but i probably watched that scene like starting from there to the end i mean I, I hundreds of times well you yeah. saw the best part of the movie <laughs> right 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 um and I got to actually see the movie before it came out to the public. I actually, I remember one of my friends that worked with me at the movie at the movie theater was in, in high school with me. And I, in between classes, we crossed paths and he's like, hey, I thought you'd be watching the movie right now. And I was like, wait, wait, what? They're going to play it right now for us? He's like, yeah. So I literally grabbed my skateboard. I ditched school. I, like, <laughs> took, off, I took off to the movie theater. I made it on time, but there, the line of people that was waiting for the movie, they had been camping out there for like three days. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so I crazy. walked in just straight in because I worked at the theater and I got to watch it, you know, obviously before any of those people. And I sat there and obviously I was the biggest closet Star Wars geek, you know, in my high school. Cause it wasn't cool to, to like yeah. Star Wars then, you know? So I, I was geeking out. And then I sat there and like the movie ended and I was like, I think I missed something. I think I, I think I, maybe I didn't, I missed something in the line. Like, why am I not liking this? I was like, no, no, no. I gotta, I gotta watch it again. And sure enough, I watched it maybe like four or five times before I kind of realized that I didn't like, I didn't like, you know, the, 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 yeah, the, the, you know, the, just the movie just in general like the the plot line and, and all yeah. that and then episode two came out and i was still working at that movie theater and uh and again i same same feeling like i kind of walked out like why don't i like I, this is star wars like wh- i'm supposed to like this like why am i not liking it but then episode three came out and i was like yes yep. yes this is what i'm talking about this is star wars <clears throat> and in fact to celebrate Kind of for me, what I thought was the very last movie that's ever mm-hmm. gonna get made. I got this tattoo, which is the Revenge of the Jedi poster right here. Nice. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm gonna go get this sick Star Wars tattoo to like commemorate like the end of like the movies. <laughs> and 
Here yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, still got uh, a cool tattoo though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, I had a similar experience to yours. Well, I didn't, I couldn't ditch school because my mom would have decapitated <laughs> my head. But um, I was working in Sports Authority, and and this is like they were building this whole like shopping area, and it was just everything was newly built, even the movie theater. So I was working in Sports Authority, and the movie theater was right next to us. It was walking, like, literally just walking, like, like I could have jumped and I was in the movie theaters. So yeah. I remember uh, I was working, I, I worked team sports and I did the, some of the sneaker uh, department as well. And I remember just like, Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait. I need to get out of here uh, at 10 o'clock. I need to clean up everything and make sure you know how, you know how it is working yeah. retail. This one thing you always had to make sure that everything was clean so that you could like your boss could say, all right, get out of here. And then yeah. you could go, so I remember like there was always like well, that one customer that walked in at like 9 30 right before you're about to close and say, like, I need I need sneakers. So I like rush it, <laughs> kissed the feet, threw it out of the, the, the store, cleaned up, and ran to the movie theaters and, and watched it at midnight. So you should have told him just go to Foot Locker, get out of here. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> We're done. I, w- I wish, man. But like, yeah, no, it was uh it was a good experience, but you know, like just to see like the duel the I mean here the duel of the fates and mall. Yeah. That was such, I mean, everyone was going crazy. Um, the pod racing scene like was unnecessary, but I kind of see why they did that. Cause you know, George, you wanted to push like technology mm-hmm. forward and yeah. just hearing that, like the whizzing, like in like the movie theater, like, Oh, cool. Yeah. Like, do, 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 you know, you know? Yeah. and even though you're like, Oh my God, this is kind of corny, but like just the sound effects was so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, <sighs> Again, I I just loved Star Wars in general. Like where you're like, you're like, oh man, I don't know, but I like Star Wars. Like I like it. Yeah. But no, the last Jedi was one of the ones where I'm just like, I yeah. can't. This is not. Oh. This is not it. This is not Star Wars. Like you know. Um, yeah. But, but like, no, go ahead, finish. finish. No, but I was just saying, like, hopefully, you know, the Kenobi show kind of brings some redemptions to some yeah. some of these actors especially hayden you know yeah i know he went through a lot with some of yeah. the you know prequel hate so yeah yeah i was just going to add my story for episode one when it came out yeah. I, pl- I planned getting engaged that day so i planned the whole flowers the dinner the whole nine yards mm. and then we're all done with dinner and she's like what are we gonna do i was like we're going to the midnight showing of episode <laughs> one she's like are you serious i said yeah oh, so yeah. We went and that, that's how we ended the day. And then she gave you back the ring after. She <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, listen, nerd, we're not going to have but, this. Uh, <laughs> well, she's a keeper if she, like, you know. Yeah, she, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. She's like, what's with this Jar Jar guy? I don't I'm, know. T- I'm I telling you, it, it, it was tough. It was midnight in the opening scene with the Viceroy, and those rubber masks were so bad. Mm-hmm. And I looked over at her and I was like, what the? And she just looked at me. She goes, oh, I don't know. I was like, oh, no. And then Jar Jar comes on. I'm just like, oh, no. Yeah, and then, seriously, uh, Maul, I love Qui-Gon. And then yeah. Maul redeemed that. Like, I'm a big Darth Maul fan. I just think he's the coolest looking villain that yeah. came out of the Star Wars universe. But, yeah, yeah that was a tough one. I really think, like, thank God for Re- Revenge of the Sith. You yeah. know, like, yeah, the darkness of Revenge of the Sith. I just think that if... It didn't end the way it did with Revenge of the Sith. I think the prequels would have gotten like I think not a lot of people would have yeah. liked it, you know. Yeah, you Sith know, it was so. good. It, it definitely redeemed the whole. Yeah, I think the the whole trilogy. I I agree. I totally yeah. totally agree because you know just the emotions. I, from, yeah. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this, but as much as I love Darth Maul versus Qui Gon and uh, and uh, Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. I still think Obi Wan versus uh, Kenobi is like my favorite duel. Oh, that's like, the best fight. That's the yeah, best. Oh, with my, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Because I rewatched it I, after the Kenobi trailer. I rewatched Revenge of the Sith again, like the other yeah. night, and uh, like just seeing the first shot when they're like flying over Coruscant, like yeah. with the with the Jedi starfighters. Yeah. I was just like, wow, like so Ooh. cool. And it's crazy when you when you watch that scene. And it, again, it, it took. I mean, I have appreciated that, but it took a while for me to like really mm. appreciate. It. If you watch that scene compared to any other lightsaber duel, but except for maybe Ray, the Ray duel in in the Force Awakens, uh, 
you don't feel like emotion, right? It's, it seems kind of choreographed and that, but in that episode three battle, mm-hmm. like you see the hatred, like, you Oh see yeah. The the and, aggression. Like, the emotion in it. Mm-hmm. So cool. yeah. Yeah. And then you, you gotta watch like the whole scene. Like I'll, I'll, I'll post it on, on the group and on the collection wars group. There's someone who cut, who edited to where it's like one, just like fight. Mm-hmm. And it's, cool because you don't realize that they're actually fighting in different areas of mustafar they're like mm-hmm. balancing and they're hitting each other and doing a lot of like fencing mm-hmm. and then they're ju- they're like they're fighting like on like like this building that's falling and collapsing they're fighting everywhere like yeah. no one really like realized that you know like oh my gosh like do yeah. the face they're fighting okay they did jump up and down and they fight in like a certain area mm-hmm. but Kenobi and you know Anakin, they're fighting like everywhere in that planet, you know. Yeah. So yeah, they covered some ground. Oh and my then, gosh. but that's all what we waited for. We want to see yeah. Anakin turn into Vader. So yeah. mm-hmm. that's that that's it. why that movie was so perfect toward the end. That mm-hmm. epic fight, beautiful music, the emotion, like you know, when he's like, You were my brother. I mean, you just yeah. like want to cry with him, like, man, oh, this is like too, man. It was, and, and he's just sitting there and he's like, I hate you. Yeah. And Hayden did such a good job acting that out because you could really feel yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And then you just feel the sadness afterward, and you know, other yeah. than the oh, like yeah. I can overlook, yeah. I can overlook that. Yeah, I, everything I, I, else was so good. I yeah. can overlook the fact that she just died of sadness. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, but, but like, you oh. know what? It's a beautiful scene, though. Like, regardless of like the reasoning, or whatever. Yeah, even <laughs> that, that funeral scene. Right? Have you seen that? Somebody um pointed out, and I don't remember who online mm-hmm. pointed out like the similarities of the scene mm-hmm. that it shows um Amidala or Padme kind of in the funeral scene, um just the way it's shot, and then it it, it cuts over to Vader in that mm-hmm. same pose. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and it's kind of like as as she's moving along, it's moving on to Vader, and it's like mm-hmm. showing that that's just, just like mem- like mimic it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that scene just like the way it's shot just mimics it. Oh, and then something about it was like the um I don't rem- I don't remember it. something about the the layout of his his little chamber thing, like his little mm-hmm. operating bed. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what it was, but there were some similarities again there. Yeah. It's just such a such a cool just a good movie. Yeah. And you know what it's Doug Chang. You know, I hope Gabe at some point, Doug Chang, you're able to get him on your show because I am a big fan of his. Like, I love some of his like concept artwork, yeah. you know. And uh, I know he's he's done a lot for the prequels, also for the Mandalorian, you know. Yeah. Like, so yeah, some of his work is great, and some of those shots are great as well. But unfortunately, I just think that you know Lucas might have gotten might might have taken too much on by himself like he was yeah. doing screenplay he was doing the, the directing the producing it was yeah. a lot and he's like i think someone said in the chat that yeah he surrounded himself by a lot of yes men you know empire strikes back he was like you know he's still married to his uh, ex-wife and who, who i think she was an editor in the in the game right yeah yeah so she had a lot to say i'm sure you know like hey george you're not gonna yeah. get some tonight if you put that character in that yeah. movie or that dialogue. <laughs> yeah. 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 But so but all of that, I think, and especially during during the shutdown, like obviously my love for the prequels, mm-hmm. well, or my n- newly found love for the prequels came from Clone Wars because I, I watched mm-hmm. Clone Wars through and I was like, holy crap, there's so much more like that I didn't realize, you know, to the prequels. And then and then after now watching the prequels and then watching the Clone Wars, now getting to see Kenobi, I'm just like, oh, holy crap! Like this is like like with with watching Kenobi without watching Clone Wars, you're doing yourself a disservice mm-hmm. because I there's gonna be a, I, probably a lot of callbacks to to Clone Wars mm-hmm. and a lot of scenes, and I think. Whoever has it, and I, I know Michael, you haven't watched Clone Wars. I, I Me think either. Oh, you, you haven't, Sean. <laughs> I think you should strategically go online, find a list because people have them all over the place. Mm-hmm. Because there mm-hmm. are a lot of filler episodes, and don't waste your time on them. 
go and find a good list of like must watch episodes of Clone Wars to be caught up. And then obviously, yeah. if you want to go back and kind of fill yourself in on the other, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> what I did, that's oh, what I, did I, I wanted to prepare for Ahsoka, so that's the only reason why I started watching the Clone Wars. So me and my oh, daughter my were like just sat there and we just looked for every Ahsoka episode. Yeah, and that's how I we- actually. I actually, I watched the, is it seven seasons? So I watched the last seasons. I did go and watch that because that led right into the movie. That was really cool how that just melded together. And then Disney did have where you can like Ahsoka essentials as they had a list and you can go. So I did watch all those. Yeah. 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 Rebels is good too. Matt also mentioned. I watched, I I did watch Rebels. Right. You need to kind of know about them for the like Inquisitors and all Mm. that. Yeah. 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 Damn, Gabe. What's I know. Look at me. I know. I'm like, I'm like yeah. a, a a young man here with all the. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe for me, like I said, like I, I've I, I I all I love all Star Wars stuff. You know, as you know, you know, like I said, like I'll eat up er- anything and everything Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Just not some of the sequel stuff, but yeah, no, in the most part, uh, I can. I know Armando Oliva said <laughs> respect. <laughs> I love Armando. That's my son. Yeah. No, I, hey, listen, <laughs> no, it, it's crazy too. Is that like now I'm at that point, like, cause trust me, dude, like gr- growing up at that time, I had like, um, <laughs> no, but like the things like I grew up, like, you know, with uh, a lot of my friends that watched the prequels and like totally like bashed me for it. So, you know, I still, even to this day, I, I still, I still like it no matter what, <laughs> you know, I know some people like might disagree, but it's, I'm at that place where I'm I'm still good with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, look, at Sean, Sean knows what's up. Yeah, I actually, Rebels is great. Rebels is good. Yeah, Rebels is really, really good. And I, I, <laughs> again, there's some filler episodes, but some of those like some scenes are just so powerful like really really powerful like the kenobi versus maul scene there i now look, i haven't watched i haven't i okay, haven't watched so so, so that one i did watch you did i did and i loved that Absolutely. yeah I thought, man if this why aren't they doing shit like this no. instead of book of boba i mean i i'm just i don't understand it but those yeah. are i did like that i did I, like that a lot yeah. i left at the the fight with Ahsoka and Anakin and Invader, which mm-hmm. was I think season what three? The, the season two, two, yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. That's kind of where I left off, so I still got a little bit to go. Yeah, it, it gets it definitely gets better, and and Rebels was definitely a surprise show. Mm-hmm. I just think mm-hmm. that, and I don't know. Sometimes, like you know, with the Book of Boba, right? Like, <laughs> it's not like it's not like something like Favreau. I don't know. Something I just might. Have, Something, some there's some outside entity, Kathleen yeah. Kennedy, that might have said like, "Hey, can you add these things in? Like, we need to check off this list." Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't I, know. I, 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 I say it's Robert Rodriguez, but oh um, yeah, God yeah. dang, don't even go there. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> Gabe, you know Lee just called you a millennial, right? <laughs> no, you know, we, me and him had this conversation a couple of days ago. Oh, <laughs> We were talking. We were talking about that, and I was like, I forgot what. I think we were like joking around with David or something. We were saying that David, I don't know, he was old and I was young or something. And then I was like, Oh, let me see when Generation X is. And I googled it, and it said Generation X is from like 1965 to 1980. But yeah. I was born March of 81. So I'm three three months into 81. So I was like, I'm a millennial. Wait, what? I, know, I, I, thought, I thought millennial was 82, 83. Like that's so, start- so yeah. So then I found some other articles that said, yeah, then it could go 81. And then some people are saying that from 81 to 83, it's like this weird, like transition separate hybrid thing. Uh, yeah, there was a bunch of things. Yeah. But, um, but that's why yeah. he's calling me that because he's. That's where it came up. <laughs> I, I think of Generation I'm X. Sorry. Yeah, I was born in 1980, so I yeah. think I'm that Generation X. I think I'm good. I think. I, I think you're, you're good, regardless. I think <laughs> I'm three, I'm three months. My, those three months, I'm like, I was, you know. And, and then you guys are gonna see me in celebration with skinny jeans and like a really tight. <laughs> <life. laughs> Michael's gonna be like, oh, I wear this. Let's get out of here, guys. 
other way. <laughs> Yes. Oh, man. Uh, uh, and then I'll have my Jar Jar Binks t-shirt. Oh, there's PJ. Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, but I actually like, you know, uh, I'm really excited to, it's, 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 speaking of meeting up, I'm really excited to kind of see everyone's celebration. So you guys are all going, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll be there. You guys are, you guys will be there? Um, well, I'm trying to get my tickets uh, Monday. <clears throat> I mean Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, everyone's Tuesday watching. Night. <laughs> Tuesday night at nine p.m. It's going to go scale. Uh, now Monday, uh, I'm going to get my tickets um, yeah. and see. You know, hopefully I could go. I'm going to go anyways. I'm yeah. going to, yeah, because there's like I said, it's that <laughs> essence. And Sean, you have to go at some point, man. I don't know. Yeah, it won't be this year. Like I said, I got the wedding I to pay for, wedding. and then we're going to hit that ICC con in Nashville. Yeah, so that's at the yeah. end of April, so that's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, so, I, I'm not I gonna. I'm not gonna say there's a, a since you a collection wars house, but, <laughs> but we did there. There is a certain rental with the swimming pool and it, it's and it's very nice because Matt has sent me uh, pictures of it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so wait, there is a story. There is a swimming pool. Yeah, it's got it's a jacuzzi. Is it, is it like it's not, it's nice. heart? A jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine yeah. like, we're all gonna we're all gonna cram in the jacuzzi all together like just oh like, man no nah. but uh <laughs> but yeah no we, we definitely we're we're gonna be hanging out there and you know lee's birthday's on saturday so um okay. you know, after after celebration i'm sure we'll you know we'll be hanging out and stuff so nice yeah. that's awesome yeah. yeah i can't wait to see uh, everyone there and just kind of hang out and talk it's one thing about doing these shows and talking in in over the internet but yeah. to see people in person is just a different feeling and just like a little bit more connection you know um yeah, Thank you. yeah. no and, and that's the cool thing is actually meeting people like in person because that's the other crazy part right mm -hmm. like it's rare that we get to meet you know people in this community kind of in person until these celebrations or these like conventions uh i was i was fortunate enough to to finally meet michael you know at, at disneyland of a few months ago uh, yeah. and we kind of all met up at Disneyland. So that was really, really cool. Um, but it's kind of surreal, right? It's kind of surreal right. to see somebody that you like, you feel like, you know, and like you, mm -hmm. you obviously you, you, you're friends with, and then you see mm -hmm. them in person. You're like, Oh, Hey, but it was, it was like, it, yeah. you know, it was obviously good to see you for the first time, but it was dude. I, like I said that night, you know, and it was David's birthday, you know, we're so worked out. <laughs> but, but it was a good, it was a good time though. Everyone's better. <laughs> yeah, I well, I yeah, yeah definitely I, me. That's why, I, like, my shots are from here, like, up, you know. <laughs> We're yeah. after hours right now, right? Lee, you're such a dick. But I, I, I will say that uh, fatter and also shorter, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, whoa, you know? Yeah, yeah Sean, I got to I got to meet in real person, too, because um, he's nice. he's here in San Diego, too. So I yeah, got very to, cool. I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pinocchio. Well, I was going to uh, say. Yeah. Uh, Okay, right, and, and Michael, you guys live in California, obviously, right? Is I'm no in Texas. Mike, yeah, Michael's, Wait, in Texas. Michael's in Texas. Okay, yeah, I'm in the free state. In the free. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm in, yeah, I'm in San Diego. In San Diego. Uh, okay, is it far? From Anaheim's not too far from here, right? Uh, Anaheim's about an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah, an hour and forty-five. Yeah. Are you staying the? Well, is everyone staying the hotel with the jacuzzi? My my no my my wife and my kids are gonna also go, so we're gonna get a hotel. Okay. Um, and then I'll I'll probably ditch the family and go. <laughs> <for a little. laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, yeah, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be cool to, to see everyone, and hopefully hopefully PJ could get some tickets and Matt next time, man. We gotta. <clears throat> yeah. Keep... Well, the last celebration I went to was uh, Chicago, and that was also a last minute thing. I was there's this group like uh, where I'm part of, and and always when it comes close to like you know celebrations, people yeah. start selling their tickets. They can't yeah. make it, so uh, last time I was able to buy like a four or five day pass mm. from this dude for like for pretty cheap. It was like 150 yeah. bucks or something like that. I was like, all right, I'll take it. Yeah. And uh, I went there. I went there by myself. I didn't care. I was just gonna go. I took. I got a hotel in Chicago. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the you know actually met Star Wars Theory there for the first time in one of the 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 pizza place Giordano's yeah. I believe and uh, yeah it was uh, it was awesome he's he is shorter in person <laughs> yeah but he's a cool guy super cool guy uh, he's got like an entourage though like everyone loves that dude uh, yeah. yeah so nice. yeah, he's cool though um but yeah so that's I mean that's that's coming up and um. Man, I, I I can't wait. I can't wait to see what 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 goes down. All the all the shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you, are you guys looking forward to anything in uh, in celebration? Like, are you just gonna go pick up some prints, art, or collectibles? I, I don't have a specific plan. Like, I you know, because the thing is, like, if you want to go into the panels, like, you're gonna have to like either sleep there like right right spend the night overnight in the line to kind of mm. get decent seats or like Jeez. spend eight hours or whatever you know in line mm -hmm. so i'm like uh i don't know if that's something we're all gonna want to do you know but well last the did you go did you go to sell uh, chicago celebration or i didn't go to chicago no I so did. chicago they oh you did uh, mm -hmm. Oh, Michael. So, you know, like they actually changed it up so you don't have to wait in line. Oh. So they just randomly pick, like you enter. Oh, it's a lottery. Yeah, it's a lottery. So, yeah, but I didn't do any of the panels myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was there to see my Chewbacca. That was my main reason. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom, yeah. I wonder if Tom's going, right? The real oh, world. for sure. Oh, I'm yeah. sure they're there. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's already told me. Oh, he is. Okay. Because yeah. uh, last, last time I saw him there, he was super busy. You know, yeah. in Chicago, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they had my chew there. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but yeah, he had some cool stuff there. You know, that mm -hmm. was the first time he was really, show, you know, releasing the maquette. You know, Tauntaun and, and all yeah. those those chewy busts are beautiful. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> hey, Michael, I want to. You sent me this this quick video. I just want to show that because Sean sent me some really cool pictures. I want to. I want to kind of jump in there. Yeah, just, I, was, I was hoping we were going to be seeing that stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so can I, I to see Sean's stuff. Yeah. Can disc, I, disclaimer, Michael, there is some sequel dioramas in there. That's, <laughs> that's my oh, disclaimer gosh. early. <laughs> yeah. I just want to show this pan that you did of, of, of yeah. the video. Let me see if I can get that on there. David says, bring the mollies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's sick! Yeah, the Holy Rancor pit looks great. Beautiful, dude. Yeah, I still got trim work to do. And... Oh my gosh, dude! You just recreated that beautiful scene, man. I'm a Jabba Palace guy, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I just love. Is that so like getting... slow, is that in slow motion? Uh, no, I guess it's not. I don't even know what that video is. No, I think you're. It's the last one that you sent me. Oh, okay. Yeah, but um, that's why I'm getting salacious, uh, Michael, uh, from Regal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Because I love everything from that uh, that scene. Now, did Joel make a lot of the six scale for you? Um, he did those two right there. Damn. And he, re he And he repainted and changed up a lot of the... The, um, uh, the weak way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he... he did a kick-ass job weathering and yeah. redoing the eyes on Yak Face and weathering up some of the, the outfits. And by the way, Leia, that's a Fison doll back there. I know her boobs aren't normally that big. <laughs> I, I was got, wondering. I've got that one too. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so, oh, look at the light. Even dude. the little pillows. That's so. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude, it looks yeah, freaking awesome. That's awesome. I got a Legacy Arts. I got to hit hit him up. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful, dude. Yeah. Look at that. that. And everything's well placed. That's that's one yeah, thing I you. love about thank this. You. Uh yeah, when the music's playing and the right lighting, it's I just wish you could it just I'm telling you, this is cool what you're seeing. Oh, but so until you see it in person, it's just not the same. I, I well, mean, I mean, because anybody that's seen that Java in person, I mean that's, yeah, that's huge. That's the six scale Java. That thing yeah. is massive. Like yeah. Yeah, Gabe, don't show my picture of mine because it just doesn't do justice to this thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, there, I, dude, that is sick. Yeah. Got, is that wow. the um the sideshow one? It is. I just got it finally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So dude. awesome. 
I am so jealous, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, Michael. I'm no, jealous, man. No, you don't have to be sorry. It's okay though, but it's it's oh, they the got the ring. Oh, you, did you put some uh saliva in his mouth? Like, yeah, I did. I did. That is sick. What'd you do? Like see, look at the, the ceiling right there where they fall in. Yeah, that's cool. Or the trap, you know. But so we're gonna have down lighting right there, which is really cool. That'll Shadow on him, and you'll see that see the gate and everything. Oh, the gate looks. Yeah, sick. there's there's no lighting in there right now, but there will be. Now, Michael, didn't you use hot glue for the saliva? I did. Yep. 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 And back there's a door. I don't know if you could see it back there, but in that oh. back door, there's a guy back there that's looking in. He's a rancor, one of the rancor keepers. How do you yeah. like the rancor, uh, Michael? Oh, I love that rancor. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I, I love it. You know, I know, and uh, it's sold out. That's, I mean, that's why I like yeah. I learned my lesson. I didn't pick up that do back from Sideshow, and yeah. now it's like yeah. going for like two thousand bucks. Yeah, that's my favorite Sideshow piece is that do back. Yeah, but yeah. So, what you saw in there, I, I also have a the the smelter mm -hmm. droid. I have him. Oh, yeah, because there's another little section, right? Like, where, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> but just the details are just. Never ends. I mean, you can just yeah. stare in this some bitch. It's just yeah. I'm, yeah, and that's why. Like when see the chimes back in there and the stairs, and yeah. I mean, there's so many details. And that cooker does light up back there, and yeah, so that's what we were. Sorry, Michael, that's what we were talking about today. I called yep. it a pig spit. Yeah, yep, I'm yep, trying yep. to get Jens to make me one to size it for the diorama I have behind me. Yeah, but yeah, you I need just, one of those. If, if y'all knew that th this thing is. Across it's seven feet across and five wow. five and a half feet deep. That's awesome. That's awesome. F F the module case, man. I need to get right. this. <laughs> yeah, man, it's sweet. Oh my gosh. And Michael, like that's what I was saying. Like, every, like I'm I'm like looking at you, but I just keep staring to your your background there, oh, man. I was just like, yeah, it's um, awesome. What's the name of the artist? I think Lee posted it in uh your group uh it's the guy that he does a lot of like the, the uh the art prints with like you know certain lighting he did the job us one recently i forgot the name of it if, no, if lee's no. in the chat i know he posted oh, it. yeah yeah um and that print was super it was like relatively cheap right like it was like yeah. 15 bucks um yeah, so I met that artist. I forgot the name of the artist, but I met the artist in Celebration last time, Absolutely. and I did buy a couple prints from his. I did the uh, the New Hope and some other stuff. Uh, oh, no, the the Cantina scene. I did the Cantina scene because that was an exclusive. They and I saw Christmas. Yeah. Dude, that would look sick with... All right, I'll... I gotta hit up Jan. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll... <laughs> hey, hey, real quick. Um, so one of the questions was... Um, to, what, what was he? Oh, the skulls. Yeah, so I do have. Sorry to cut you off, guys. But yeah, no, no. yeah, we do have skulls that are in the works to put down in the in the deal. And um, far from Death Star, I, I'm I'm gonna know about the Gorilla Glue because that that's kind of the, the thing is if you use hot glue, mm -hmm. it's it's not permanent. So I can take the saliva, you know, or redo it. It's it's always it's not gonna. If you use Gorilla Glue, it's it's permanent, and if it doesn't fix correctly then you're screwed so be yeah. careful with that. just fyi yeah jason christmas yeah i met him in uh, celebration he does beautiful artwork especially this one. Oh man yeah. i'm definitely getting this one yeah that would be really cool to have because this whole setup by the way is going to be built in the wall mm -hmm. so yeah. it's having something like that right there like in a frame on the mm -hmm. wall of it or something would be really cool yeah that looked nice hey so real quick are, are they um have they sh talked about the guests that are going to be there yet? Are they starting to hit the guests yet? I haven't looked. Because it was months and months before the last celebration. You knew who was going to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, BMX Jedi, that's, it, it's a naked sideshow. But, so it has its little blue, you know, little suit with the vest. But the blue started kind of crumpling up. So I took it off and I'm going to make a custom one, kind of a little bit more accurate to the movie colors. Um, so, but yeah, that Greedo is a sideshow. Uh, all right. Let's take a look at some of these pictures from Sean. Yeah. Little new addition there, the Scout Blaster. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I Did can't you get yours yet, Gabe? No, no, no. I Literally, me and Joseph were the last yeah. two people 
yeah. that picked it up. And in fact, the re the reason why I know is because I ordered mine and then I was like, guys, like whoever's going to get this needs to jump on it right now. And then Joseph got it and then it was sold out. So like he literally, like I think me and him got the last two. Um, and in fact, I think in his invoice, I, for I, I forgot how we determined that, but there was some mix up with some of the uh, plaques that were getting sent out. And somebody else got the last one, like someone earlier because they lost their plaque. So they sent them the last one. Uh, Joseph was a little, yeah. a little I, I mean, I'd be too. I'd be like, oh man, that's, I would have loved that round number, you know? Uh, yeah. Matt's collection think? says that the only guests at celebration will be Ryan Johnson and Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> honest, I thought he was being serious. Uh, uh, oh, that was funny. Uh, yeah, so uh, this yeah. right, I, I just ordered the RS bus to go with that scout helmet today. Nice. So I got that. And then have you ever seen the, it's the Wana Wonga bunker bomb? It's like yeah. a kit. Okay, yeah. so I, I have that kit. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Ben Huckabee. Yeah, the yeah. dirty rogue designs. Well, yeah. he's painting that for for me. So yeah, yeah so I'm gonna pair the bunker bomb with the bust and nice. just a, like a whole Jedi a little section there. Yeah, I was chatting with him when he kind of like broke the code on on the texture. Yeah, he was like, "Dude, check this out. You can't tell anybody yet, but look at this." And like the texture, just he got it like spot on. Yeah, did like he just posted a video, I think a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. in the Facebook chat where he was talking about he found the actual paint they used yeah. on the, the 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 movie props in Jedi. So he's using that actual paint. So it's going to be super authentic. Yeah. No. He. No. He. Yeah. He was using the full quotes, but he the texture is what. It was oh. really hard to like figure out because it's kind of bumpy, but it's okay. not as like yeah. I, anyways, yeah, he 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 sent me pictures of oh, like nice. the screen news, and I was like, oh man, he he nailed it. Yeah, I'm excited for that. It's gonna look good. Hey, Sean, uh, the the guy who the artist that did that uh, Vanderstelt. Yeah, yeah, we've had him on our show. He's super cool. Yeah, yeah I saw it. I watched yeah. the show that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. his stuff's good. He's, I look forward to seeing him again um, at the show. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I have his Indiana Jones print as well. That's yeah. really oh, awesome. Wow. That's, a, that's a good one. Yeah, that one's nice. Prints. I love it, his his work. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Sean. So I, I could tell right. You got the the weathered one, right? The yes. Weathered, right. Yeah. I could tell the little thing. Is that is it raw resin underneath or is it silver? Uh, it's like white. It's is it's it's more of like a grayish silver, I guess. Okay, so yeah. it looks like battle damage as opposed to like a prop that's being. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm gonna grab it real quick. Awesome, it's right here. Yeah, I, I love the the weathered extra six scale. I yeah. guess that, I, I guess that's a Mandalorian version right there. Yeah, is that what it is, PJ? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think that one's really really cool. Yeah. I've got the other one, but I don't have that one. Yeah, I think they're they're releasing the the Return of the Jedi version, so. I wonder what the difference is. I have that. I would think I have that one. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, Gabe, it's more of the resin. So it is just kind of like raw. Yeah. Resin. I don't know if it's focused. Uh, yeah. And is it is it just kind of there? Or is it kind of spread around everywhere? That's probably the heaviest part because when he was putting in his ankle holster, that's mm -hmm. where it was rubbing at. Okay. So it's weathered, but it's very tastefully done it's very light weathering yeah. so it's not overkill but it's weathered just enough to bring out the details because it's so black yeah but Beautiful. yeah that's ass. that's i'm so happy i jumped on that yeah man this is as close as you're gonna get to owning the real thing well because there was this, so there was this big i don't know if you guys you guys remember so um so in efx collectibles was putting out the biker scout helmets and now mm -hmm. we're talking about almost what seven years now no, yeah. six, six seven years now man since they announced it they released the the limited and the and the legend and the legend was supposed to come with a, a you know a scout trooper a blaster casted directly from one of the screen used ones mm -hmm. and that's really what i wanted it for because i really didn't want the weathered version of it because i wanted it to match my other helmets so i was always planning to get the limited but i wanted that blaster and then again six 
seven years later, you know, we're still waiting for it. Um, And I was just like, as soon as I saw that RS put this out, I was like, done. I I need that. Yeah, because I had a vision for this whole shelf. And then I was like, I really need a scout blaster. And those are very hard to find. And when RS announced it, I just lit up. And I mean, I immediately jumped on it, like within the first 60 seconds. And I still got number 52. (laughs) And I thought I got on it quick. Yeah. So Sean Stone, who just said that he just got the DAC helmet a few weeks ago. Who yeah. is that? Is that an RS? Yeah. An RS that, exclusive yeah. with the hyperdrive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Hey, and yeah. it so it, and that's really cool because I'd like to have that as well. But can you imagine having the real one like Gus has? I mean, yeah, that, that's unbelievable. Do you remember that? We, yeah, we yeah, that? Yeah. I remember seeing a little thing on RS showing that helmet. I think. And then yeah. knowing that we just a few weeks ago showed the real one that Gus has in his yeah. camera. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. So that's the, my, I call it Mall's Corner. That's the mm. Phil Robinson bust. Oh, and yeah. I actually made that plaque and I sent it to him. And I actually sent him a couple of them. So he signed that plaque for me and sent it back when he shipped the oh, bust. That's cool. And that's that Corbant uh, Crimson Menace Saber. Mm-hmm. And then that's a signed uh, Ray Park photo I got from Beckett. And then nice. the, uh, Hot very toys. well displayed. Very well displayed. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and I always heard, you know, you light the villains from the bottom and the heroes from the top, and it really does. It, it gives it that menacing look. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I love that. that I love that thing. Yeah, that's super cool. Do you have that DAC helmet too, Sean? That- no, I didn't get it. No, because yeah. because RS announced they're going to redo the signature edition Gold Leader X Wing helmet, oh. and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that. Gotcha. And then that's the uh, XM Studios. Uh, yeah, I, I Luke on Hoth. Yeah, that statue's that's sick. That's badass. Hey, can I ask you something just to back up real quick on the blaster, real fast? Yeah. Because I know Gabe's intrigued and excited to get his. But so is it true that because I want the the full biker scout suit because uh, our friend Sean did a, a, an amazing job on a life size, and I think if you if you buy the whole outfit, you can get the gun as well, gun with it. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the only way you can because they did a, a limited run of 125 like this. Mm-hmm. So, but you they do give this casting with the full biker scout scout commission. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna get that. That's yeah, best. I I love your six scale. That, that's just that's a, I love the dirty up one. But anyway, oh look at the blaster. Dude, and I see. Yeah, I see Batman. Did you send me pictures of that Batman? I'm like, <laughs> uh, uh, the 66. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know I, I've got like two detox with some Marvel and DC. It's, yeah. it's, you know, that's what got me in the comic books was yeah. 66 Batman. So when they re-released, when they re-aired it. There's a local comic book store that's selling the Robin, the 66 Robin yeah, for, I have retail, that too. Yeah. for retail. And so. then that's a closet door I made. I just, uh, I had that routed out of two pieces of birch wood and I kind of gorilla glued sandwiched in between some 316 white acrylic and then I kind of took a jig and routed out the uh, door it's hinges. Easy. Not easy to do, but you did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was kind of a pain because that after I had routed out and glued it, the weather had changed because I live in the uh, in the south, so it's a humid climate because I live by the ocean, and that thing started warping, and it, I had to put yeah. water on it. Oh, it was oh, it, that that so- became a nightmare. <laughs> and, I, and then uh, that yeah. looks so cool. Oops. Oh, thanks. Hey, real quick on that blaster though. Is that the one that you have, Gabe? That's my favorite thing in your collection. Nope. It's not. <laughs> That's the rubies. It, it's the toy. It was a white oh, toy with it. Yeah. And I and I weathered it and I matte painted it and I dry brushed it to make it look. That's cool. Beautiful. Wow, that is- there is a company. I don't know if you've ever heard of Field Marshal. It's called a Blaster Factory. Yeah, and they're actually in Greenville, South Carolina, and he gets the original found parts and he laser scans them and then he machines them either out of steel or aluminum. And he is working on recreating the Leia blaster. And I think he said it was, they could announce it in August. So right. I, I'm because that's that's my placeholder, the rubies, because I'm waiting for for that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's the same company that did the Jawa blasters. Like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know he did that. Cool. Yeah. Man, I bet that's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish I would have got one of those little blasters. I meant to get one. I just, so many different damn things, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then I, like, I love that Tarkin, man. I, 
I'm so upset about that Tark Invader deal. I had purchased that. I got it a good deal. It was like at the time, it was like about two years ago. I got it for like 600 bucks uh -huh. for the new set, Sean. And I got a, a text the next day saying that I guess he double sold it. I don't know what. Oh, the oh um, I hate that. Yeah, it was just something. I was so pissed off, but I'll gladly give you your money back, you know, and. But I wanted the the because I can't get that kind of deal anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I love that Tarkin man. I wish I had that. And it was with the seat too. You had the chair mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. I, I've got Leia sitting in that chair. I, you'll see in a few more pictures. I, I've I've got some close ups of the dioramas. What's up, what's up with those helmets? What are those? The EFX? Yeah, that's EFX. The PCR on the left, and then that's a. Have you ever heard of new image prop replicas? They're out of England. No. Yeah, it's this very small company. It's a husband and wife, and the, and it's it's not uh it's more idealized because he sculpted it himself. But that's all fiberglass in two parts, and you put it together. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the price for that helmet was so cheap, mm -hmm. I, I, cheap in collector world. You know, <laughs> right? Of course, it's not cheap to my wife. It's cheap yeah. in collector world. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it came out fantastic, and that's a heavy duty helmet, and then. Yeah. That's the Black Series Stormtrooper, which mm. actually this week I was going to replace it with an RS one. And then the bus came out. So I was like, oh, I'm going to yeah. buy the bus and then I'll just replace that down the road. Yeah. I see. Yeah, very well. Oh, there they are. Yeah. yeah, a little close up. That Vader helmet's sweet, though. I mean, like for Dude, the price. Yeah. And that EFX, the PCR helmet, man, that it looks really good from yeah from this i always kind of just i was like well i got the master up because when I, you know I don't, it's good yeah damn, that looks real good mm -hmm. yeah for the price you can't beat it i got the uh efx pcr i think pcr uh vader helmet vader for like, yeah mm -hmm. for a good price as well i think i got it for 300 yeah nice Friend. that's a good price Agreed. yeah yeah uh, this was like probably when i first started attempting to make dioramas this was probably one of my first ones so mm -hmm. i was just experimenting with like some textured snow paint and nice. then and then you can buy just some like like faux rocks and stuff yeah and then i run a sign company so i can print all these backgrounds so, i so, love it man that's freaking badass so man. so like this one and you can see to the right where the ad at driver is it's kind of like the background's one continuous hoth scene mm -hmm. yeah. but i had to split it to put it in the two dioramas yeah. Or the two DTOFs, I'm sorry. Man, that's cool. I love that friggin' that, that snow speeder Luke. It sideshows, and man, yeah, that's just probably one of my favorite figures. Me, me too. I, I love that one too. Yeah, it's awesome. I've got that him and that Leia in that heavy ass jazz ink snow hallway. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, dang that thing. I can't even believe he's he ships that damn thing. It's so freaking yeah. heavy. I mean, it's a shocker how heavy mm. that is. That yeah, shit. I was tempted on that. that. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, so I you wouldn't believe how it's like carrying a 50 pound bag of sand. Oh it's my god, so, oh, geez. That, that polystone, it's yeah. it's a solid. I mean, I can't believe how heavy that shit to yeah. even go into production to make something like that and ship it. What a nightmare, I would think. But yeah. anyway, mine showed up in good shape. So, so I would yeah. just wish someone would give Jazz uh, the Star Wars license because he makes great stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't All think right. it matters because he, he, uh, you know, he's still. He's still rocking it out, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now this, now this Jabba, like, like I said, it's not to scale, but this was when I was first putting this room together. Mm. I really didn't re attempt making any type of dioramas like this, so mm. this was probably like one of my first attempts on it. Well, I think it mm. looks great. Yeah. Yeah. But now, see, because I talk to Jens a lot, because like me and him keep in pretty good contact. And then looking at yours, Michael, like I see some, I might make a little bit of changes on this one because I, I, I kind of see what he's done. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, the little arc at the top where those symbols are. Yep. Like Jens has got that little bit of darker paint to bring them out more. I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm trying to get him to, pin, to print that uh, little barbecue to go behind him. Oh, very cool. Because yeah, be that drives me nuts, that negative space. Mm -hmm. yeah. if you know me i'm ocd and that really bugs me <laughs> <laughs> you can also throw some vines in it if you have an indiana jones raiders of lost art and it'd look pretty good too yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's cool man yeah. that looks cool 
Yeah, so the top one is a company called Rhino Dioramas, and then the bottom one's Jazz Inc. Mm. Damn, that looks so cool. I love that carbon freeze chamber. Just that. Yeah, orange. I was gonna say I love the Jazz Inc. one. Yeah, yeah. And those are the Return of the Jedi troopers, but I don't care. They just look cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did a great job. Dang, yeah. But I, I love having the like say my, my room's small, but I have the detox because you have four different shelves in the detox. So when I make the dioramas, they're they're not too huge, so they're inexpensive, mm-hmm. and then I can just keep changing the environments out, and uh, it just really brings the figures to life. Yeah. And this one's the Jazz Inc. that has the little LCD screen in the background that plays. Yeah, the video. yeah, yeah. It sold out quick, and they don't have they make that anymore. Yeah, because usually it's the one where, you know, the, the video file he gives you is where they blow up Alderaan. Yes. Mm. So, so I have that in the beginning, and I went and I altered it, and I added all the space scenes from all the prequels, and I threw them in, in there. So when I play it, it's like 20 minutes long. That's, oh, wow. That's, wow. Yeah. That's, that's cool. So that's a little 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 screen right there, correct? Yeah, it's a TV. Yeah. That's badass. And then I just got that New Hope Vader probably a month ago. And then. Uh, that's look, really yeah, that one's a pretty yeah, cool. cool. Wow. Yeah, the Tantive Four. That's the Rogue One Vader. Cool. I think that's that's my favorite Vader. Yeah, mine too. I love that Darth Vader. Yeah, it's funny because that's how mine end up looking um, more like the Hayden Christensen, the my life size. Yeah, mm. yeah, it one turned out kind of more like the Hayden Christensen. Yes. So that's more jazz ink. Mm. Yeah. Because when he first started out, he was really into the detox size, and yeah. the price was pretty affordable. So, yeah. I was a big, you know, fan of his from the beginning. That's another one of his. That's like the deluxe version of the Death Star wall, and then that hologram tables from the uh, Obi the Obi Wan Kenobi yeah. deluxe set. So, mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to pose it with Obi Wan, and I just figured it looks cool there. Yeah, and then. Like it, it runs off batteries, but on Amazon, you can buy these little batteries that have a wire that goes to an outlet, like a plug. Mm. So everything in this room is wired up that way. So when I come in, I flip one switch and everything turns on. And then that's an aftermarket waste mace when do, but that figures it's from toy works, I believe. And it's pretty, it's pretty good for a third party. Yeah. And then one of my best friends, he actually, he lives across the street from me, but he learned to make those light up sabers. Oh, so, that's what I was going to ask. I was like, so I don't, I don't collect the, the hot toys, but I was like, I didn't know they, the lightsabers lit up. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy makes them. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yeah. And then he's right across the street. Can't beat that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. And it, is it like wired or like yeah like yeah it's, yeah it runs off a little like battery pack and just a little USB plug. Nice, man, that's so cool. Oh, hey, Sean, yeah. you, Sean, do you ever? Uh, yeah, that's badass. It's, like, it's almost like the the original twelve or the early yeah. part special or something. Dude, I love that. That's honestly when I started collecting hot toys, like my first like high-end figure was the sideshow temple of doom indiana jones Mm -hmm. only because i got it for like 150 bucks Mm -hmm. you know and i brought it home my wife's like oh my god it was 150 dollars." now like six (laughs) six years later you're like yeah (laughs) i would be lucky to to have that but obi-wan the the old uh, old man obi-wan was my first hot toy and then i said well i'm just going to get the new hope figures that's it yeah, and then look at it over a hundred hey, figures. Where did that display? Is that Jazz Ink? Display? That's Jazz Inks. That was one of the first things. Like, I don't know. Like back in the day, he put a video on YouTube, and he did the, the, the hallway. Yeah, that yeah. really big one. And then that, then this was more of like the affordable one that hung on the wall. Oh my gosh! And I... that was sold out for years. And then one day, I was at work just scrolling on eBay, and that popped up. And I'm like, that never ever comes up. And I bought it on the spot. I was like, I'm, what'd you yeah. get it for? If you don't mind me asking like four. Yeah. Yeah. What, not bad. what did he sell them for back then? I think it was close to retail. I think it was around like three seventy five, yeah. And then by the time you pay shipping, re- redo those. I'll bet you now is as popular as he is. If he came out with that again, I bet he'd sell out a shit ton of those. I'd buy mm-hmm. one in a heartbeat. You yeah. know, my buddy that makes the sabers, we re- we recreated this and I, we built one for him 
because I have access to a router. So I had some yeah. aluminum. I routed out the, the background out of aluminum and then we backlit it. And Does it look pretty good? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, re it's really close to this. Dude, one. I love that one, Gabe. And yeah. then that's the Anthony Daniels signature plaque there. I got oh, off yeah. the. Uh, got, yeah, yeah. That was off the hyperdrive. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. And then as soon as I get it, he's going to end up coming to the Nashville Tech Comic Con. So uh, well, at least I'll get to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. I love that display. Yeah. That's, that's so good. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Up. Oh, close your eyes, Gabe. <laughs> or not Gabe, Michael, close Mike, your eyes. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, closing, I'm closing my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that looks so badass. I yeah. still look good. Yeah. I love the design of Kylo. Yeah. I, yeah. I, hey, and, and let me just say, Sean, I have him too. Do you? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I have That's him, cool. Ray, and BB, and just yeah. a couple of the others. My, yeah. Michael has a secret shrine for <laughs> yeah. the sequels. I just, the closet. I just love that opening scene where. I, I want to say I read it was Mustafar, like, because I guess Mustafar had, it was a lot of foliage and different types of climates on that planet. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the planet that he was on. But I just thought that was so cool in the movie, just the contrast between his black and then the, the white snow. And you know what would have been badass? And I know it was rushed. Um, but when they did um, The Force Awakens, and by the way, real quick, you need to see if your buddy can legit make that lightsaber light up because in that snow background with the red glow it'll be yes. he has tried that one's a tough one now, there, there there is a company called chris's sabers i think mm -hmm. i found them on instagram that he makes them that yeah. would be really cool actually I, i'm up, with chris yeah yeah they're yeah, about a that's crazy they're about a hundred bucks a piece hey but what i was gonna say what would be really badass is in force awakens if when when you were first introduced to Kylo Ren, if he would have had the Ralph McQuarrie Vader helmet, yes, mm. would yes. that have been that cool. Cool. Yes, you know, like a tribute to Grandpa. Oh, yeah. that dude, that would have been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would have been like fan service to the max. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go, Mike. Yeah, yeah, this one's Michael's tough. That's the last movie. Jedi. Yeah, this is breaking uh, my heart right now. Uh, <laughs> I Wait, know you're, you're missing. Nah, it still looks good though. Oh, Let's hey, put a free giveaway on y'all's show or something. <laughs> <laughs> put it this way, like I, I do have to start selling off some to get some new ones, and these no, are probably two no, that are gonna no, go. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it. As, as Emperor <laughs> used to say, do it. You're you, where, where's this? You should have put this in the back. Oh, <laughs> oh son of a! You should have no. printed this. Oh and you my god! Put that, in the background. that was the worst <laughs> ever scene. So are those are those like boobs on the top and balls underneath? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to understand <laughs> this setup there. That's that's <laughs> that's what you should have replicated. Sean. Oh my god! I, I just I, make that I just couldn't. Uh, I just I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I thought it was a. I was like, this is a. This movie's a joke. Uh, I was like, oh my god! But I am happy how that diorama came out with the grass yeah. and the rocks. Yeah. And, yeah, and if you, and that out nice. And if you move oh. the figures out of the way, like those rocks on the left just flow like right into the image, so it just looks mm. seamless. Yeah, the figures look good. The the sculpt looks great. I had that. Uh, that I like movie. I like them. The movie sucks, but I like them both. Both the figures. Mm -hmm. Look to be to be fair. That movie, that scene is good. For <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Remember from last, we were playing Triumph the Insult Doug. Remember he? Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really good for me to poop on. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I was like that, that like, milk king, the green milk scene. Uh, oh my god! Oh, this one I love. Oh, that's super uh, good. Now this is Yen's. Yen's just. I was gonna ask if he did that for you. Yeah, I making it. Back in August, we collaborated on it, and he's like, well, "Yeah, that's a great idea." And he just sent me multiple 3D renderings of it, mm -hmm. and we tried to we had to make it where it would fit inside the detoff, and yeah, it came out excellent. Yeah, Perfect. I like that. Yeah, I love yeah. the way you print those I, those backgrounds. So, yeah. yeah, he and it. I. Yeah, he and I had talked about those because he's gonna if he ends up moving to Texas, he had talked to me about doing printing the backgrounds for him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. So Matt, do you do that for frequently for other people, or is it just your own little hobby thing that you do? Yeah, just just for myself. And like honestly, what 
Oh, that's oh, you got the uh, piece of the, the yeah, cell. little piece of the mm, cell. Part. Nice, Man, nice. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I like display. it. That's beautiful. Hey, why not on your wall? Yeah, that's what? nice. It is on my wall. Um, oh, I, just, okay. Okay. I recently just put it up. But Gabe, it would look better on my wall. <laughs> where, yeah. where, where'd you get it, uh, Gabe? Uh, this is actually it's so it's prop store. Um, mm. Prop store, Ooh, one of the prop store here. auctions. You can see the the certificate right there. Um, yeah, every once in a while, like little pieces come out. It's actually a gift. So my uncle, you know how you're saying, PJ, that your uncle was like a big fan growing up. I, I had the same kind of experience where I had a, a little bit older uncle. I mean, not super much older. I think he was like eight years older. And he was a super fan. And he was the one who got me into Master Replicas and all that stuff. And mm. he gifted me a lot of the stuff when he got out of the Wow. Club. It's, yeah, it's insane. That's awesome. I wish I had an uncle like that. I know, right? Oh, yeah. here's the Master Replicas uh, Boba Fett Blaster. Oh, dude. Wow. he No, he gifted me a lot. Like the Stormtrooper helmet. That one, that's the LE Master Up because he gave it to me. The remote, the the Jedi training remote, he, he gave that to me. Uh, a screen used piece of the Death Star, like a, an actual piece. Like he, that's so I mean, cool. he just, yeah, I mean, he's nice. It's been, you know, it's amazing, know, he, amazing what the, the legend, does the legend that. Vader, the legend Vader, like yeah. the EFX freaking legend. Score. Like like, it's yours. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's, dude, that's crazy. That thing's that amazing. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's a since that's a great since, uncle, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Since you're talking about gifts, gifting, you know, I like to what comes around goes around. I love to yeah. to give and um I, I know I'm sure Gabe knows that, but I just want to do a shout out to my good friend and brother. His name's John. Um I'm not gonna say his last name, but this guy gifted me this week. A, I just want to tell you guys, I've been waiting. This is one of the one things that I didn't have in my collection. And he was putting it together for me and gifted me an early bird vintage set. Complete. Wow. Are you serious? Wow. That's, been, that's and, amazing. And this is the thing is when he sent it to me, um, the tray that the four figures sit in was damaged. It was squished. So oh. the, the light tray and those that just the trays alone are over a thousand bucks oh my god but, but, the, but the, this guy is such a has such a heart and he's flown here with his family and seen the gallery and we've had dinner and you know i've done some things for him too but he's just such a good-hearted man and yeah guys if you only knew i i took video of it in a picture but I'm gonna send this to Gabe just because I want I want you guys to see how I don't, even, I don't know if we want to see it, man. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. you know, Gabe, when we get those calls from Joseph, uh, Joseph, whenever he gets his his things, it's hilarious. But uh oh, yeah, not good. So th this is how it came. Gabe, I'm gonna send that to you right now. Uh -huh. Okay. Gabe. I, l I love how you have the emperor too set up with the yeah that's the classic scene you know uh do you have the the base underneath his feet uh sean i oh, geez, michael i i actually had just moved it because if you look right above me there it is mm -hmm. I, I i had a plaque made with an open space so when we go to nashville i'm gonna get ian mcdermott to sign that plaque oh so, nice so, dude. so so it'll sit right there Oh, Gabe, that's sweet. So that's how. Oh, that's sick. yeah. So this this is what he's like. Okay, it's leaving. And then, oh oh no. my gosh! And just so you guys know, that is the telescoping Luke. Scott. Really? Thank heavens, his lightsaber because it was kind of. If you guys see how it's kind of bent in no. a little bit, mm. so luckily it wasn't damaged. Um, so he Who, was, like, was, was it FedEx. Um, no, it wasn't. Yes. Yeah, it was Man. just a yeah, yeah. Or USPS. USPS. That's such a beautiful set. Yeah, and, and it, I'm so jealous it. looking at it. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, and look at it before. So now what we're trying oh. to do is just find a tray for it and then wow. You know, make it look at that and then get in the other piece. It's like, oh shoot. Oh, that's oh, so man, that's, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Man, but just you know, it's stuff like this. I mean, who who does stuff like that? You know, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's weird. I I met this guy on eBay. And uh, really? we're talking, yeah, that's how it initially started. And then he's just such a good hearted man. He, he's the guy that, you know, makes you want to 
you know, I love to give and man, it, it's, on, wow. it's on a whole other level. But yeah, that's special. Yeah, man, that's for nice. sure. But yeah, I, I love that, that emperor. So I, I have, uh, out of the few, you know, non replicas, like mm-hmm. I have the, the premium format emperor with the premium yeah. format those. And it's like, I want to set it up and I want it, I just want it to give it its own, like, yeah, it's just because they look so damn cool. Yeah, I love the emperor. Yeah, I love the. Th- I mean, obviously the throne. I'm like a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love yeah. that piece. I have that one too. I love that. Yeah, that's a little that close up of that. Yeah, well that's, displayed, Sean. Yeah, mm-hmm. full disclosure. I kind of found that image on on the internet, and then I kind of did a bunch of Photoshop work to it, and then I had a custom plaque made it says our princess and it's got nice. leia's birth date and when she died and and i just awesome. I, I i only made one other one and i gave to my buddy across the street so yeah. hey sean thanks for the kind words man about thank you for saying that that's nice yeah man oh that's cool yeah, that's yeah. Really cool. okay now this was my very first diorama i ever built oh you did wow yeah wow that's good man that's really good. i think they're I can't remember if I sent the other pictures where I was building it, but yeah. So I, I commissioned to get the, the door 3d printed. Mm-hmm. And then I found the other 3d printed pieces like on eBay mm-hmm. and then I just painted them. And then, but I textured all the walls and then that's a regal robot, little mini mythosaur skull. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. My boy death blades back on. I know he's freaking out right now. He's, now that's a guy who's got a problem ordering six scale. I mean, <laughs> I mean, side, sideshow knows his name by heart. Like, we know <laughs> he's going to be ordered. It doesn't matter what it is. He'll, is, that, he'll is that Matt Hess? Yeah. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had him on the show. What was it last week, PJ? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's my boy, he's good. Yeah, name. Matt. Yeah, Matt's awesome. Matt's, yeah, Matt's uh, Matt's super cool, man. Yeah. Man, but you did a great job on that. Man, yeah. thanks. Like I yeah. say, like because Michael had asked me, do I make them for other people? It's like I don't because in my mind, I'm like I just don't know if they're good enough, and you know they're good mm. enough for me. Like yeah. I'm, it, it just brings the it gives an environment for these yeah. figures, so they're just not sitting in a glass case, yeah. and plus it gives me something to do. <laughs> you know. Yeah, my kids but, always ask me about you know you know why don't you build these things for other people and do it. But I just don't think my heart would be in it doing that. I, yeah. I like to build the one thing and it's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm i uh, I'm working on a Mustafar one right now. I screwed it up about three weeks ago. So I'm, I'm redoing it. So I'll probably Maybe be painting, calling. painting that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, there it is. That's it without the figure. So you can see. Oh, the wow. Door. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's something to be proud of. You did that. Yeah, I, I am like, I, you know, I was just, my wife actually painted the door. I remember because she's very artistic. I was like, "Can you weather this and paint it?" Because, like I said, this was my first that's cool. stab at it. Yeah. Damn, yeah, that's yeah, pretty damn good. Damn, yeah. yeah, I think it came out well. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that one. Oh, Michelle yeah. Nooney's print. Yeah, I love yeah. the way this looks. This is yeah, so- yeah, I yeah love this was just- it. it was a good photo. Yeah, I yeah. just hung that up yesterday. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good setup. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think there's another picture where you can yeah, see. Yeah, that it. was a, an inspiration Lee got yeah. to do that. Yeah, I like that one with uh, Luke hanging on the weather vane. Looking yeah, I, I've always wanted that. And, and, yeah. and the, is, that, is that the two-pack? Yes, the DX07. Yeah. But they, that, they've had forever, but um, coming soon, but they've never re-released it. Do you, so you have another one too, right? Is it just in a box or something? Or no, what? he's in the Bestman, Bestman diorama. Okay. I got him with Lando and Leia and R2. I sure wish I would have got that So, one. Sean, does that come with, with like, like the hardware to yeah. yeah on it? So it's yeah. ready to go? Oh, yeah. that's really Now, cool. you could either – it comes with a little stand at the bottom if you wanted to, like, put it on your desk, and then it comes with the hardware to mount it on the ceiling. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah. Yeah, I love that one. That print looks so good because you don't really get that much color in Star Wars, and it just adds that mm-hmm. little pop of color in the room. Yeah, That's Robinson's mall. Yeah. Um, I've got my Yoda mailed out. I can't wait to get my Yoda from him. Yeah. It's, you know, me and yeah. This was uh, Rogue One uh, Lemieux, the planet of Lemieux in the, in the beginning. 
This yeah. was a fun one to make because I started playing with like puddles. There's a company, it's called AK Interactive. They make like, it's called puddles and they, they make all kind of modeling paints and stuff. And then I basically just bought like a bag of rocks on Amazon and I, oh, really? and I modge podged them where you just take the paste and you pour oh. them into it and it dries clear. Oh, and then I had bought, I took that same puddles uh, bottle of the, the liquid and I watered it down and put it in a spray bottle. And I sprayed all the foliage so it looks like it's raining. Mm. Speaking, I wish I had him. I don't have him. Dude, figure's fantastic. Speaking yeah. of Rogue One, Michael, where do you put Rogue One in the Star Wars? What do you mean? Oh, in, uh, in, in, in order. <laughs> of like favorites? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I would say number three. Wow. wow. Nice. A lot of people nice. had I knew yeah. we'd get along. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what would you say, Sean? I actually put it four because I have a hard time with return. Be yeah, because of the nostalgia of yeah, the I original. Understand. But I it, it, to be honest, it's a superior movie. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's really great. I love yeah. that movie. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Rogue One has uh, climbed up the charts in a lot of people's like lists, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, surprised you, put, I'm right? surprised you put it at three, Michael. Yeah. Over yeah. Return of the Jedi, yeah. But I do like Return of the Jedi, Gabe. I know that's your your favorite one, you know, but um, I don't dislike it. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a sadness when I saw Return of the Jedi because I thought that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was sad. I remember being sad, and I wasn't real happy at the time about the Ewoks. I do I do think they're cool, but, I mean, it, I don't know. Yeah. No, I and I've, I've, I've heard that, and especially because you're already used to – you kind of were – you saw that darkness, right, from Empire, and then all of a sudden the contrast with the little teddy bears. And yeah, dude, exactly. Yeah. It was still a little dark, but – and then, you know, when PJ was talking about uh, number three, mm -hmm. you know, to watch uh, watch it, honestly, out of the one through three, it's absolutely the, the best one out of those three. But I, I can say that um, it sucks knowing that, that Anakin that's good – turns bad you don't want him to turn bad when you know he's mm -hmm. going to you know mm -hmm. yeah but it but it, it it was good except i mean i just can't believe that that they had him yell out that at the very end that was so <laughs> oh, <I'm upset. laughs> yeah. did you like what did you think about the yelling part at the end which one the no, the no. what other was there i mean dude, <laughs> i know like, i mean that's um so no that was uh yeah that was very uh cringy well, the, what the kids would say now and it was just kind of like i don't know it was yeah it was uh well, it was the, hard it well, was, it, it, remember it, with the blu-rays too remember with the blue when they redid the blu-rays they re-edited return of the jedi to make yeah. like wicked blink and then they did they added a no at the end when he throws the emperor Mm -hmm. In Return of the Jedi, they added that no. No, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? That was like a big... I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it was a big mm -hmm. thing. Like, it was like all the fans were like, what the hell? Yeah, when the Blu-rays came out, they, yeah. they did all these weird Jeez. modifications. Like I said, Wicket had like real CGI eyes. Like, instead of like the black kind of just mm -hmm. like... Really? Marble. You know what sucked, though, yeah. and when they did the new trilogies, like in Return? And I know everyone's going to blow up on the viewers what they're going to say right now, because that was the nice part. But I thought it sucked that they took the old man Anakin out of there yeah. and put the young the young one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can say, well, that's when he's nice. I'm like, no, that's disrespectful. I think that, you know, that's, you know, that's when he got nice again. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. Good, you know, at the very end and keep him like that. But don't bring in the young one because you could say that the young ones when he actually turned bad in that picture, you know, that's yeah. why he started to kill all the Jedis and you got, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird. Cause then, you know, Kenobi is like, Obi, right. Is, is old, but then. Yeah. yeah that was the stupidest yeah. dumb thing. I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe if, if they were going to edit him, maybe they'll put McGregor in there. <laughs> now I know it's up everybody it's, no I don't think I don't even at this point I don't even think people would be that pissed off anymore I mean at this point yeah I mean at this mm -hmm. point I don't think yeah it's just now they it's it's they already got something new to hate which is you know. <laughs> yeah. and you know what the thing is too is that like 
I don't I don't know how they're gonna salvage like some of the the sequel stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, because the star the Galactic Star Cruiser, I think people are like, what the hell? No. I I followed this YouTubers. Uh, I think I said it on you know with Sean. I told Sean this in Sithcast is the uh, ordinary adventures, and they went to check out the Star Cruiser. I fell asleep like <laughs> in a lot yeah. of those videos, and I was like, what is this? Yeah. And I'm like four thousand dollars. I'd rather just buy a freaking collectible. Yeah. Chewy bust. Chewy bust. Exactly. Yeah. yeah well, we- money. We're talking about that too, is that it's actually, it's different. It's almost different fandom too, because mm-hmm. like I said, can you imagine Michael dressing up, you know, for four days? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, I'm sorry, I, Michael. That's not right. a good, yeah. especially a slave Leia. Like, come on. <laughs> or like whatever they're wearing. Like right. the, ca- the captain of that ship, it looked like a, like Dude. a, like a smurf right yeah like, yeah it's yeah. like a blue like oompa loompa oompa loompa there you go oompa loompa i was like what is going what is going on here he like of, he almost looks like um he looks like george lucas in <laughs> episode two <laughs> remember right when like it, the the camera pans and he's like mm-hmm. dressed in like this like weird like captain's like oh yes yes george lucas is in the films yeah, I remember that it's in Revenge, right? Like, uh, let me it, let me find it. Huh? But <laughs> it, are they trying to mimic that that alien species? Oh no, with, with that captain. But I watched it, and I'm like, man, if I spent four thousand dollars, yeah, yeah, that's it, right? This guy, yeah, 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 yeah. It right? looks like Sean Connery on the right. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank God that we saw a little glimpse of it because if we had more scenes of him like that i would have been like oh god oh, <laughs> right you know if george sees that it's going to be right down with his thoughts of the holiday special <laughs> the, yeah you know what I mean? oh man but yeah no i was just gonna say like fourth it's just a lot of money and for two days like yeah yeah it's too it's much yeah. too much oh yeah oh i love this i love yeah. this yeah scarif yeah that one that one was a pain in the butt the water, look at that. Yeah, there's a company called Woodland Scenics. They do a lot of modeling stuff, and they have like a a, a whole water kit that you can kind of buy, and mm-hmm. that water is almost like a rubbery substance. And then you have to come back and highlight it with the the froth, mm-hmm. you know. The, but yeah, I like I love it because of the color. That's one reason I love Rogue One because of the end, just being on a beach and it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I have her. I think it's she's the one that I have. Does she have also the cap that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The deluxe so version. Have, yeah. I have her, but I don't have those two. I I, I sure wish. And then the, they never came out with the uh, the other Bays. Bays Malbus. Yeah. yeah. They never came out with them, right? Nope. Nope. I wonder why. because uh, they're uh, stupid. <laughs> it's like ridiculous that's yeah. hot toys for you they must um, ha- they must hate money because everyone wants to buy, buy base. base yeah yeah but that k2so man the, especially in was that scene in was it in the mandalorian scene or boba scene right like the boba show where oh, they yeah. should have the k2so yeah yeah the yeah. terminator scene yeah they call him an imperial security droids so what his yeah yeah is. yeah that's it. He's a cool. Now, I I look forward actually to seeing, um, what what is the new one going to be called? The, oh, uh, Jetta or Andor? Andor. 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 Yeah. yeah. Andor. Yes. That, that one's going to be cool, I think, because yeah. hopefully it'll be like Mandalorian. It won't have to do with the other shit. You know what I mean? It'll just be mm-hmm. yeah. just look at adventure stuff. You know. You don't. You don't. You don't have any expectations for it. It's kind of like Rogue One when you went yeah. into it, and then all of a sudden you walked out like, oh, my gosh, that was the best Star Wars movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy because I remember going to The Force Awakens, like the first first showing, and like mm. there was like so many people there with like lightsabers. Mm. And then Ugh. the next the movie was the Rogue One movie, yeah. and there was like hardly anyone there. I yeah. was like, was this a Star Wars movie? I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think people didn't realize, like, didn't understand, like, wait, what? It's like a, it's it's a Star Wars movie, but it's like separate from the films, like mm-hmm. super weird. Hey. But I think that's why Mandalorian was so good too. I think because yeah. 
there are zero expectations. Like we were like, yeah. who knows what this is? Yeah. Hey, Normando, I, I agree 1000%. That was, if I don't want to say it was negative because it went and it was cool seeing stormtroopers in the water and shit, but it was just kind of weird when I would, I'd see, you know, the, the pretty beaches and stuff, you know, it's like, they have to get every single world that you can think of, but see, but I like that teaser poster, Michael. That teaser yeah, poster, it's cool. Was, it's like, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the beach, with the Death Star in the background, yeah, like, yeah. It, that he, contrast is. He's got it behind it. Yeah, yeah. I I actually have that poster yeah. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and but it's just kind of it took me a little bit, but it was cool seeing him in the little jungle and yeah and, and whatnot. But yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that that's the Ro Roman. Yeah, that Roman. Yeah, the Keno I love that Kenobi saber. And yeah. then that that's actually that's not the Roman ESB. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who makes it, uh, but I am going to replace that one with the Roman, the yeah. new version five he's making. Wow, I need still that Vader saber for my life size Vader. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah Roman. Corbanth is putting out some with the metal chassis. Have you, see, you guys seen those? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Is that the one that comes apart? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll pull them up in a little bit, but man, yeah. geez. Yeah. So that's the, that's Palpatine's, uh, K I think it's a KR saber makes that. Mm. And then that's the Disney Vader one. Nice. Who, who did that DL 44? Oh, that's, uh, it's called that's actually a paintball gun. What? It, it's it's made by a company called AW Customs, and I, I'm telling you that thing's oh. legit. Yeah. Wow! It actually shoots like where yeah. You, I guess I, can I, do thing. Uh, uh, you let's see. You know, like on the bottom of the the barrel where there's like that little ridges yeah, or the right. vent. Yeah. yeah, that pops out, and you load the pellets in there, and you clam it in there, and you go huh. to town. And this oh, working, wow. working scope and everything. That's it's all so it's cool. all scanned off the original stuff. Oh, wow. That's yeah, it's called AW Customs is who makes it. Dude, imagine yeah. that going. Yeah, being in paintball and all of a sudden yeah. pull that out. And just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or someone comes over your house like I don't like this display. You yeah, just take yeah. that out and just shoot, <laughs> shoot them. That is cool. I love yeah. it. Yeah, and then let's see. This, yeah, that's the Disney Galaxy's Edge uh, Obi Wan on the left. That saber, mm. and then that's the you'll see the Trooper Trent training remote. Yeah, that's that little solo shelf. Nice, nice. Yeah, then that's the sixteen-inch sideshow Rancor that I got a couple of months ago. I still think it looks that's great. Cool. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's for the price. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, the you gonna do some saliva coming out of his mouth? I am. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take your play dude. out of your book. Yeah. yeah, good. I got it from Math Deathblade. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Matt hooked me up with that and said, "Why don't you do that?" He was here when I did it. Yeah, because I know Jeff Sage. We, he was talking to Sean G last night about 3D printing uh, the chain to go yeah. on his wrist. Yeah, that's a good idea. And I told Sean, I was like, "Hook me up. I want one." So yeah. hope I have to reach out to him. Yeah, I agree. Solo is good. Yeah, solo is good. Yeah, there's the old, the old, old the old people. <laughs> yeah, I just should have been. Yeah, I thought it'd be cool just to put them all together yeah. and yeah, and I kind of that's a like I I have that uh, rebel symbol in the background. I had that routed out, and I've got they're like some little metal standoffs that I kind of made that background so it kind of pops off of it and gives it some dimension. Then I took Tarkin's chair and sat her. <laughs> I <laughs> noticed the Tarkin chair. Did you? That's, get yeah, that's perfect though. It looks nice. yeah. I tried to get her to sit on Darth Maul's little bench, but. With that dress, like he, she, she couldn't yeah. balance right on it. But uh, no, that's, that, that's an awesome. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. like a little tribute to to yeah. the original characters. You know, yeah, yeah. we're all yeah. we all get older. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. Yeah, yeah, but we, that's what we should have gotten in, in the movies. Is all yeah, of them. put it, get the gang back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Trooper Trent's Trent. training remote. Nice. Yeah, I love that thing. That's probably one of my favorite pieces in the whole room. Yeah. It's just cool. That's so cool. I remember 
when I first started getting into like prop replicas, you know, I wanted the master replica one, but I was like, nah, there's no way I'm going to afford it. Like I can't buy it. So I literally started researching all the found parts and I was going to just do it all myself and, mm -hmm. and all that. And that's kind of one of the first things that my, my uncle was like, here, I have the master replica one. You can, you could have it. And I was like, man, what? we need uncles. We need family members you like yours. <laughs> no way. I know. Jeez. Yeah. I know he's I no now he collects like like Disney stuff but like vintage crazy Disney stuff and mm. he went to and no then he got into a like Marvel stuff and he had all the EFX Marvel stuff he had like pretty much everything and then he got rid of those and then he started just only Disney stuff yeah Joseph just joined us yeah so that's an 89 Sabres Qui-Gon. And if you notice the way the Sabres are set up, I have them like Master and Apprentice. Very cool. So that's the way they're – that was my thinking on that. I love it. Yeah. Now the, those are those little kyber crystals you can pick up at Galaxy's Edge. I just throw it on there. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I'm surprised you don't have a Darth Maul. Uh, I've got yeah, that, the Crimson Menace one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was thinking about getting the original one, but I like that because it's kind of medieval looking. It's just something different. Yeah. And then those stands, are they're made by a company called Quest Designs, and you can find him on Etsy, nice. and they're fairly reasonably priced too. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. with the LEDs, you can change the colors. This is cool. Oh, my ceiling fan, yeah. Is this Not, one of the bowls? No, I know which I know which bowls you're talking about. I almost yeah. bought one this year. Those, yeah. those are really cool. But I actually I can't take credit for the idea because I found it a guy I did it online and I was like, man, I'm gonna make one of those. Mm -hmm. And I got very lucky and I found the exact fan because it's got the four blades and then they're just at the right shape and the right angle. Mm -hmm. And I found it at Home Depot. Yeah. And then like I said, I run a sign shop, so I designed all the graphics and I cut out the vinyl. Yeah, it's badass. And then the cannons, th there's like a 24 inch plastic X Wing toy. Like, we got like uh, three of them right next to me. Here. Okay. So I basically ripped the cannons off that. And then I modified the tips with styrene. And then I kind of made the, the classic, like, you, you know, the U shape on the tip of the cannon. I don't know if you can see it in the next picture, but the, the actual R2, that was off like an 18 inch little toy. Does it light up? Yes. Like, cause it's an LED fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then like the background light. So I, I was so lucky when I took that off the toy, it fit perfect into that wow. fan. So I used the bottom half as my trash can over here. Oh. And then you could see the tips that I modified with some styrene. And then what I a just good job, man. And I just took yeah. some pinstriping, like car pinstriping tape, and I ran the blue around it. Man, that came out freaking awesome. And I always get when the question. Turns, it, yeah, it, that, that's, that's or anything or does no, it? No, that was the question I was getting ready to say. I always get asked, is it off balance? And I'm like, no, it's st it's steady as a rock, man. Wow. That's cool. Because everything's equal. It's just like, yeah. 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 Jeez. Great and job. what's funny, I come into this room and I, I never look up and I forget about it. <laughs> yeah, that, you so. see the XM. Yeah. Yeah, Joseph got that not too long ago. I love that piece. Yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. It's, it's, I think it's sold out. We're trying oh. to give it away on our show. <laughs> like, I know. I what we were. I I, I was yeah. watching. Yeah, oops. I was watching that night, and it was like you guys kept on trying. Right? Nobody was on the. Yeah, you know, we, we, like, we tried twice. <laughs> yeah, like, no, we're gonna give one of these away. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna give away. Holy crap! Yeah, we're gonna try it one more time, but you know, I'm uh, on that one. <laughs> I, I, I'm on it because I want to win that someday. Yeah. What it? Uh, what it? What do people need to do to to sign oh, up? Oh well, it's you do? know to be fair, it was it was through Gleam, and then they just had to sign up there, and then it was a newsletter. So as long as you signed up for that newsletter, uh, it automatically really entered you, and then through Gleam, I think it does a randomizer, uh, mm -hmm. and then picks a name. Um, well. I'm out. I'm t unless Gabe or somebody can do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's John you know. knows I can't do that shit. Technology. Yeah, I think it's just putting your email in the little box, Michael. Don't yeah. talk to a, a kid. I don't know. What, 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 hey, but you need to tell me how to do it, and I'm gonna try it. 
it's a it's a great uh it's a great statue i i love it it's probably one of the best like x i mean next uh best luke skywalker statue out there um i know it really is yeah there's yeah and it just captures that moment you know when he's gonna like grapple into that at at yeah. hey i'm just asking because we're just all being open but why the hell are you giving that away <laughs> I mean, uh, who's, who's that so, not, so the, the company, that company is right. I yeah. got, yeah. understand. I didn't. I, I mean, because yeah. I mean, yeah. It, um, it's yeah, through, um, spec fiction. So um, I, I'm pretty cool with the guy there, and you know, he's a cool. great guy. So you know, Sounds he was. Like it. Uh, it was very, uh, you know, nice enough to kind of give this away. We might do another one uh, pretty soon as well. Yeah, yeah I'd like to definitely. I mean, that thing, I, I love that piece, man. That thing's badass. Yeah, I would sure as hell not give mine away. <laughs> I, that's like, what yeah. I was wondering. I, <laughs> no. I, I didn't know because Gabe's taking stuff out of his collection, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I, I mean, I'm just asking, you know, respectfully, yeah. like, why? I, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I know you want to get good ratings, but dude, keep that one to give. Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, it's and like, just like you, Michael, like, we're very, like, thankful for all our supporters and you know and uh you know it's, one, it's just one of those things we just want to say thank you to the viewers and for everyone that supported the channel Absolutely. you know yeah. so um awesome. but yeah we get we gave away short trooper uh short trooper and uh, some art prints no some no. really cool art prints so i worked with a uh, off the racks collectibles for that one and you know he was like yep yeah, let's i was like what like you want to give those away yeah. And he's like, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Let me, let me like jump out of my own channel. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll yeah. Join the, like yeah. you know. So I'm very fortunate. Some of these uh, people wanted to work with me with some of the giveaways. So yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a great piece, and there's yeah. more to come from this company. You know, more to come. Mm-hmm. So real. Yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, everybody. Um, whenever it's appropriate time. I uh, wanted to put out that I have official name for the new restaurant. That nice. I'm oh, yeah. Be- yeah, PJ, I don't know if, if, if you may have Michael. He's opening up a, a pizza restaurant, right? Oh, yeah. nice. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. We're looking forward to it. We're doing a ground up build and a lot. We've a lot's happened in the last two weeks, but finally got a name. I had a, a, a name for a, almost a week and a half and then jason excuse me joseph came in and gabe doesn't even know and threw it through a loop a wrench in the whole damn thing uh <laughs> day before yesterday and i was so freaking excited and uh you guys want to hear the name of yes 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 badass brick oven <laughs> pizza company no, i'm just kidding <laughs> I was like, uh... okay, okay, but hey seriously th- this this is the deal right now so wait, 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 wait. Before we even so PJ, by the way, it's it's a it's a, a kind of higher end, a, you know, a kind of movie themed classic movie props and you know, oh, you get what I'm saying? Like you get that feeling, like it's it's a movie atmosphere. Nice. So, okay. All right. oh my and so God. like my kids were like, oh, dad, no, don't do, that. but. They're, they know that I'm a Star Wars guy, okay? Yeah. But I want you to be open-minded being a Star Wars guy, but also not being a Star Wars guy. Yeah. Like, if you didn't know it was this was Star Wars, and you hear this name, how it sounds. Here we go. Dark Side Brick Oven Pizza Co., which is company. So it's going to be called Dark Side. Yeah. Get it? I, I mean, like it. Yeah. I like it. The Dark Side. Yeah. Of, yeah. 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 Like, you know, the, the brick, brick Oven Pizzas. Me and Joseph, because he he said it, he said on the show in a comment, and I never saw it, but I was like, dark side, brick oven, it's going to be classy, dark side. And then I was thinking, having the dark fi- facing the opposite way, and then side, you know, and having it maybe black and white. But nice. Really, you know, but, but you know, the last piece. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, but, but isn't that cool, though? Let, let's go over to, to dark side and have a pizza, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, yeah I like awesome. That. Yeah, so like when you that. do walk in there, though, you will see like a life-size Vader. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's better than Womp Rats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Womp Rats. Hey, <laughs> even my wife, Denise, she loved it. She was like, you know yeah. what? I think that's cool. You know? Yeah, it's a play and in it, words. It's you, you know, you're into that. And I'm like, hey, dude, yeah. dark side. You know, I yeah. think that's really cool. It has a nice. lot of meaning to it, especially as a, as a pizza uh, restaurant, too. Yeah. So. so, and man, we got our recipes on the pizza. And guys, I'm telling you right now. Pizza on me, buddy. When we have our grand opening, if you show up and you're a viewer, it's pizza on me, dude. I, I'm telling you that it's it's so freaking good. The the recipes come come from uh, Staten Island, New York, and it's just it's just. You're making me hungry. Man. This no, right? uh, BMX just... Jedi says the rise of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh right. my gosh <laughs> but hey hey but it's cool right guys y'all like it the viewers yeah, i like it. love it i yeah, love man. it I'm, well, I'm a dark side guy so well a yeah. big thank you to uh joseph because it was his 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 idea of the name and i call, i kept calling him he was sick as a dog and i kept calling him you know I dude I, I want you to know i'm serious i like that name you know and uh, lots of burnt pizza sean stone says. yeah yeah um well i was gonna say uh can you disclose like i wasn't sure if you can disclose where the restaurant like where in texas is it yeah yeah it's going to be in bernie texas yeah in bernie is that close to houston because my friend lives out there no so so bernie's uh, is uh, outskirts of san antonio texas oh, okay gotcha gotcha yeah yeah it's a no. really really growing popular populated area Probably. now michael yeah. how close are you to amarillo amarillo uh, far okay my father-in-law lives so there. Look, this yeah. amarillo by morning up from San oh. Antonio. Oh, okay. It's George Strait song. It's a big state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm I'm a Thank big you. like I love supporting s small businesses. So yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I wish you the best of luck, man. Appreciate lots, it. Lots of success and blessings on your new venture, man. That's Thank awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, me and Gabe have had late night talks about little ideas of you know because I have this life size ET and having a few, you know, Battlestar Galactica, maybe a couple little Back to the Future, you know, so it, it will be kind of themed 80s in there, but yet classy, though. It's hard to explain what I'm saying, but... Um, yeah, I but can, it, I can it picture be, it. Yeah, it, everything will be in, like, built in the, the bricks, and it will be glassed in where, where kids can't, you know, touch it and stuff, so... Well, it's definitely going to be a, a lot of people, like, clamoring in uh not only just to, to check out the place but you know definitely check out the pizza too. just to see that stuff right yeah, yeah. i'm looking forward to you it gotta go, gotta go meet the godfather of yeah yeah he said anakin crispy pizza <laughs> yeah oh my gosh armando says serve, serve green milk <laughs> oh, right, right hey but, uh, but seriously uh the logo, I want it to be really cool because I want to sell the the beer glass mugs, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm already. It's funny. I do things really ass backwards, right, Gabe? So like, I'll have t-shirts in in a couple weeks. I know. I just threw myself on a on a. Yeah, when everyone's like, "Where's the where our collection was?" Hey, that ain't. Hey, I, whatever. But anyways, um, <laughs> I just yeah. totally did that one. But seriously, I'm already working on the logos, and as I'm doing the permitting and stuff, and I'm hoping and. Six months will be open. Oh, that's nice. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. It's a lot of work. So. Gabe, I meant to ask you, are you guys, are, is your website up yet? <laughs> no. Oh, no. It's, I mean, it's, it's ready to go. Like, it's literally like we yeah. have so many things. And then it just, I, yeah. I mean, but you know, I, what, guys, but you know what? We haven't missed a Saturday ever. Okay. <laughs> we might not have a website and the t-shirts we keep telling y'all we're gonna have but we're here. here. But when we're here, right? You know, no, it home. just it, it was just this this timing, like middle of December. I kind of did this like just whole like career just change. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, not, I mean, because it's still the same same career, but it just <laughs> my my way of life as far as like the type of work that I, that I'm doing just kind of changed. So just my time just went like yeah. out the window, you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of this stuff kind of me and Michael don't get to chat as much during the week to yeah. kind of plan a lot of the stuff. And like, I, and again, that's what I'm saying. Like I'll, I'll take the hit on, 
on this on that one. No, it's both of us because you know I'm trying to you know put talent together and Gabe's got you know it's kind of it's crazy because Gabe we for a while I mean the wives were getting jealous. We were like every night <laughs> you know what i mean yeah my, my my wife would be like who are you talking to and i was like oh michael oh your texas best friend yeah. your, your virtual <laughs> mandate yeah 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 and hey let's not forget your beautiful little daughter gabe she's got her own channel going oh wow oh, yeah nice. you did tell her you did tell her we were gonna mention it that's right yeah she deserves it she's oh, awesome yeah my, yeah my my seven-year-old is like and maybe, maybe it's seen that I do this and, you know, and social media and stuff, but she was like, daddy, can I, can I do unboxings on stuff? I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll help you out. So she started this little channel called Kiki's, Kiki's toy, uh, Kiki's toy review. Mm. And uh, she, yeah. So I helped her like edit it and I put a little, little intro on it. So and she's got like 10 subs, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Our, our, our family, you know, I'll subscribe and stuff. I need like, to subscribe. Yeah. I just need to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, well, that's she's, awesome. She's cute. She's she's silly, and she gets all excited about it. She's like, oh Daddy, man, I got I got her this life size. One of the it's from B actually from a what is it? A Beast Kingdom uh, from Sideshow. It's like a life size uh, Lilo and Stitch or the okay, Stitch yeah, doll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I ordered it for her for her birthday back in like October. I pre-ordered this like back in August and it was like delay after delay after delay. And then it just came in like last week and she's like, I want to do a review on that. I was like, actually, you know what? If you did a review on this, you actually might get, you might get pretty decent, decent views. views. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome though. It's funny. But and yeah. If you sleep. No, yeah, oh yeah, she's, she's okay. Yeah. I don't want to embarrass her, but you yeah. let her know that that I, I'll, I'll show her this tomorrow. Yeah, you tell her Uncle Star Killer wishes her the best and I'm gonna support. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, I I know I know PJ. I know Sean. You guys are East Coast time, huh? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, and I obviously I want to respect because it's almost what one a.m. where you're at. Yeah, yeah. Well, 40, I mean. Yeah, but it's yeah. Saturday night, so yeah, Saturday <laughs> night. We don't know. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah. this is a, you know great conversations, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, this yeah, is a blast. Yeah, I'm having lots of fun, and congrats, uh, seriously, Michael. Like I, that's awesome, and hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, everything goes well, and you open up in six months' time, and we'll be uh, we'll for be sure. out there. Thank Dude. you. For that. And then franchising it out. You're gonna open one here in San Diego. Dark Side, and, uh, you Dark know? Side Brick Oven Pizza Company, man. Yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to it, man. And I'm excited about the name. You know, I was so excited because, you know, it, I think it's it's gonna be, you know. Is is today? Oh, that's right. Yeah. We, yeah. Are we Good losing board. an hour or are we gaining an hour? Losing an hour. Losing it springs forward. Yeah. So yeah. So oh, it's, you lose an hour. So for you guys, it's gonna be like it's 2 a.m. soon. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I think it starts at 2 a.m. So then it would be 3 a.m. Yeah. At, at 2 a.m. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, That's funny. Yeah. I hate this whole like stupid. I hate, I hate it. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, daylight savings time. It's like you, you don't mind it when it's like when you gain an hour, but when you lose an hour, you're like, oh, son That's a that. rough. That's going to be a rough morning getting up for work on Monday. I know. It's always like on Monday where everyone like starts like, you know, feeling it, you know? Yeah. 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 Hey, so I, I wanted to say something to Sean and and um, your friend Dan um, reached out to oh, me today. Okay. Cool. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. Yeah, man. I, I wasn't gonna do this, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and send one photo because, guys, viewers, it's effing badass. It's yeah. amazing. And I I just you know because I want to do a big reveal and but at the same time I always tell you guys I want to share the ride with y'all and. The journey to, to getting this this um this huge ass project done so but that that being said though i'm gonna send one uh sneak peek photo everybody knows um about the wampa project and um mm. we're about 85 percent complete with luke skywalker that's going to be dragged with it by the tauntaun excuse me by the the wampa so, Gabe, I don't know if this comes through, but if it does, let's show yeah. them. This is pretty fucking cool. I got it. Let's let's show this. 
Jesus, Michael. This that is, is awesome. Crazy. Yeah, Gabe hasn't seen we'll, it. We'll, we'll answer this question in a bit, but man, this is insane, Michael. Thank you. Whoa! <laughs> look so at that. That, that is Great. life size. Yeah, it's amazing. That is sick. The, the uniform is spot on. I yeah. know. Not only the uniform, but look but at that the, portrait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with the eyes closed. Mm -hmm. And let yeah. me just I'll just send this so you guys kind of have an idea. Here, can you, I think I have pictures of the base now. Can you zoom uh, in on the face? This is life size? Life size, man. Yeah. Yeah, that, like, yeah, there's the face is just it's spot on. So we're gonna we still have to bloody up his face a little bit and um and yep. uh yeah, so if you, if you guys whoa. see if you see how his arms are, so these are this is a scene that you don't see in the film, obviously, because it's a, it, they just couldn't do it. But I promise you guys you're gonna see this same setup. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see the footprints. So that's the base. Wow. And and again, this thing what is what? almost Almost 10 feet, Michael? Is that what you 12 feet long? 12 feet. And wow. where's this going to be displayed? <laughs> it's in the gallery. It'll be in my gallery. In the bedroom. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, in there man. With my wife me. <laughs> I mean, look at look at the, the body of it. Wow, it's humongous. Oh, who's that? <laughs> that's, the, that that's the genius behind the sculpt. You know? Oh, okay. wow. Wow, yeah. look at that. I mean, look how big that is. It's insane. Is it 10 feet tall? If if he's if he was to stand up, it would be. I mean, look okay. at look at that arm. I mean, that's a regular size drill. Obviously, look at the five gallon bucket. The bucket. Wow! Wow! Things that is massive. Sick. Yeah, it's getting ready. He's he's bald now, but he's getting ready to get his hair and the sculpt of the face, the head is. So look, guys. That being said, um, that's why I wanted to tell Sean. So the. Um, the actual sculpt, and we're going to talk about this in detail, but um, the actual sculpt came from Dan, and um, uh, he was super classy on the phone, but he didn't realize that I took his statue and um, I oh, guess... Oh, Dan, okay. DMD. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dan, the Dynamic Menace, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let me just just show one thing of his. Because this is where it came from. This is yeah, where the, the one with the like with the taunt, the one with the yeah, taunt, yeah. Taunt, all dead, right? With all yeah, dead. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember when I very first, I think uh, Mike Costa showed me that that deal, and I, I'd never seen the statue before. But um, just I know some of you guys have seen it, but I just want a, a special let him see this, uh, Gabe. Yeah, that statue's sick. Yeah, he did a, such a good job, but he was shocked today to get, you know, to hear from me, right, Sean? And then to yeah, yeah, yeah. find out that, hey, we, we took your statue as inspiration mm -hmm. and made it life-size. And Yeah, because he, he was, was like... Very yeah, respectful. Yeah, because he's like, well, what does he want to talk about? I was like, listen, man, he's just got inspired by you, and he just wants to tell you thanks, and, you know... Did you tell him what it was about, Sean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave him the heads up because he was oh. he was apprehensive at first. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was pretty cool. We talked for a little while, and if he's tuning in, you know, it's kind of late now, but I know he said he was going to watch tonight. But yeah, he yeah, was in a little earlier, and I think yeah, yeah. it's it's late yeah, where yeah. he's at. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. a big thank you to him, and mm -hmm. it's really cool to 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 see something like this and make it a reality, you know, because you know I initially was going to do the tauntaun and. And my boy was like, "How? What if we did Luke?" And then it's like, you guys saw, yeah, so, you know, I, I love this the the collaboration and and these commissions, and you know, wouldn't it be awesome to have this thing at Celebration, guys? Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, showstopper. Yeah, yeah, I would love for Mark Hamill to see it. Actually. Oh wow, yeah. If he saw that, he would be like, "What the?" Fuck? I would love to have him standing by it. That'd be yeah. Really good. Anybody that, but the problem, I and this is, I don't think anyone's doing that. Yeah. logistic yeah, yeah. right even logistically like even some of the bigger booths right like i mean how big can they really be right 20 yeah. 20 by 20 maybe the biggest yeah, the right? like, yeah. this thing would take up a, a, most of that right yeah. mm -hmm. there's a lot of times there's those open areas where like they had the life-size figures and yeah you know, yeah like props but you yeah. wouldn't want that just out in the open either, you know? Like, oh, hell no. I'd have a yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but but man, we're only like we're we're about thirty less a little less than thirty days yeah. from completion and me being over wow. there it up. So. Wow. That's all. That's awesome. You but I keep saying to everybody, I'm not going to show it anymore till it's done. But yeah. yeah, you know, you guys are with me in the evenings. You spend time with me and Gabe, and I'm excited about the project. And it's just, it's yeah. like you know, it's like all this stuff. I'm so blessed to to be able to 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 get this stuff and do it. And yeah. I just, I love it. I love it. I'm yeah, I'm excited to see your new wing when you get everything in its place, and it's yeah. just going to look. Yeah, good. it's just. The thing is, and now I got the restaurant thing, and I'm going to be building, and that's important yeah. to me. So, even though we've got the slab poured here at the gallery, mm -hmm. you know, it might slow things down a little bit. But what sucks is I'm starting to to feel a lot of other people's pain on a different level. But where things are starting to stack up, where I can't display them yet, you know, and that's yeah. kind of shitty. But I know real estate, man. That's the yeah. number one problem with the uh, yeah. amen. <laughs> Well, especially Michael goes big, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the definition of of Texas, right? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. go big, go yeah. big. Go and I mean, look at that background. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, that's going big, all right. I mean, yeah. well, the the you know, the Wampa. Yeah, the Wampa. Well, then you also have you have a life size probe droid. Like you got, I mean, jeez, man. Eight, yeah. It, if that was ever in celebration, dude, that would be a Jeez. Oh yeah, people will freak. Yeah, people will freak yeah. out with that thing. You know, that's just because I know McMaster is going to have his probe droid there, and I would love to have the Wampa there. But yeah, man, that's a lot of work. I'm getting this on the picking this up on the East Coast, and then to mm -hmm. to drive it to California, and then here, and then uh, it's just yeah. where's it at on the East Coast? Um, it's in um yep, South North Carolina. South Carolina. Oh, you're in my mm -hmm. neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you just yeah. take an extra few days, come over to the beach. We can hang out. You know, weather's getting warm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, I think uh, Marcel was asking how Sean and I yeah. met. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we met. Fans actually, only. <laughs> yeah. Only fans. I actually <laughs> oh, have man. a page. <laughs> now, but like um, pay 20 bucks a month and you get the lewds. Not the nudes. <laughs> not, nudes. Uh, the not nudes. the nudes, just the lewds. Um yeah. so actually we met one time before we did uh, um like Sith cast and stuff. Um that was uh I think I reached out to you for the uh the legacy lightsabers. Yeah, right? at Galaxy's Edge, the yeah. Ray Ray and Leia legacy saber set they were selling. Yeah, I was looking to picking that up, but I was just like, I don't know if I want you know a ray. Yeah. I wasn't sure yet. So, yeah, yeah. but then fast forwarded, I think, how did we meet? I forgot. I can't. Was it such a Co bad co host? Was it I'm through like, Costa? I think probably Mike Costa. And then uh, I think I, I think I threw something in on the Facebook page. And then you, yeah. kind of, you kind of reached out and we just started talking. And then you said, you want to come on one day? And we just hit it off. Yeah, yeah, I think I had a couple of shows and I was just like, yeah, this guy's super cool. Like, I got to have this guy on more. And that's I think that's how we end up hitting it off. So, yeah, man, it's been it's been a great ride so far. We're just very, super positive, laid back and just just to, even to be on the show today with you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's like we've known each other. That's why I said at the beginning of the show. And it really is, you know. And, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of it's because you get a little comfort level because, Gabe, we watch you guys, you know, every Saturday night mm -hmm. and just coming on here. It's like, oh, we already know. Him. Like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I've been watching you guys uh, every every Saturday or try to catch you guys every Saturday. And I usually don't comment. I just kind of like I listen to you guys, you know, <laughs> and uh, I do comment once. So I always say hi. And then like I'll just listen, yeah. you know. Cause, yeah, uh, I, I'm the yeah I'm the same way. Like I'll you know every once in a while like I'll just sit there and on my phone and I'm trying to listen. You know what yeah. I mean? Whatever. It, because oh. usually usually it's around ten and like I'm I'm laying in bed yeah. and my wife is like you know she's trying to see she's can you yeah. lower down can you lower <laughs> down I'm like and I turn to the side and I just like put it like next to me and I listen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 
because I've watched you guys on your first show, Gabe. Mm -hmm. And then that's cool when you told me that this morning. Yeah, I just never spoke up a lot in in the comments. I was always watching, and then yeah. I started getting a little more comfortable, and I'd speak mm -hmm. up now and then. And yeah. especially when you were talking about like BMX bikes, and I was like, oh yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's my thing, you know. Yeah. Is that why uh, BM does BMX Jedi ride? Yeah. Yeah, we used to ride together. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. um, pretty you do in BMX. Uh, just stunt, stunt riding, like flat okay. land. That's right. Yeah. I remember asking you that because my brother in law raced professional and he's right at your age. Yeah, I never. Marty I, Christman and he was all over Japan and everywhere. Yeah, I never raced. I just did like X Games stuff, but it wasn't the ramps. We did like Flatland BMX. It was, I always said it was like ballerina and gymnastics on a bicycle, just yeah, the spinning is. and, the, you know. Yeah. So I, yeah, I wrote, I, mean, I started cool. at 12 years old. I rode for 26, 27 years. Wow. Um, yeah. You, my, my body's taking its toll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My brother in law, he, he carried the number one on the plate. You know, how yeah. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. He carried that number one for years. Nice. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I miss yeah. those days, but you know, you got to move on. Yeah. You <laughs> know, it, everybody, like I think in our whole generation, yeah. Sean, look back at like our old bikes and stuff mm -hmm. and we, we, there's a, a gentleman 80s i forget his name gabe we were gonna have him on our show mm -hmm. so he couldn't make it this saturday tonight but yeah. um but um he's he's got like seventy thousand followers on instagram it's cool wow. but nice. he's got a couple re rebuilt bikes and i know there's a lot of collectors that watch our show that that have some custom bikes i nice. i want to rebuild i'd love to get my bike back I, yeah that's me too like it's i've been expensive. i've been thinking about like I want like a dope like just all chromed out GT. Yeah, like, that'd be badass. Pegs in the front, the back, like just yeah. A really good friend of mine, he has vintage bikes, and that's what he still kind of collects and buys. And that mm -hmm. that stuff's expensive, man. If you go to online to look for vintage parts to build it, it's expensive. Man, it's crazy the mm -hmm. prices now. Because my cousin Ricky, he's he's got a couple of them, and damn. But he bought them at the right time, you know, before, yeah. kind of like Star Wars and Barbie and all this stuff is everything. Now, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and it's it's crazy how everything, like everything, like in this generation. You know what's funny? I actually, and I, I don't know if it was an article or if it was a video post or something I saw that there's this like marketing strategy, this marketing cycle every thirty years. And they do this like very on purpose. And it's like a thing that essentially what they do is they try to market, you know, all the nostalgic things of that era every 30 years. So it's mm. like, like, you know, growing up, like if, if like back in the nineties, like late nineties, you started seeing this big comeback of the seventies, right? The bell bottoms, all the girls started wearing oh, yeah. bell bottoms and all yeah. that stuff. Right now, the, all the 90s stuff is in. Like, yeah. you see my kids? Like, my kid, she's 19. She's dressing like she was in the 1990s. I was like, that's how I used to dress, which is kind of crazy, right? Yeah, hey, Mike, same with my son, too. Hey, yeah. Mike, hang on to those. Here. Mike, hang on to those Cavaricis, boy. We're going to fit right back <laughs> in them. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Z cabs. What, you know, you know what's, what's super crazy popular right now? Even the last time I went to Disneyland, I was seeing like gangster cholos with overalls on. And I was oh like, Oh my God. Overalls are back? Like, wait, what? Like, are we going to get the guest overalls and like. With the one like, strap hanging down? down? one strap. Oh, over. I did that. Yeah. yeah. I did Actually, that. they're back. It's, it's crazy because um, a lot of vintage like clothing is like coming back from the 90s. Like yeah. I was watching this guy on Netflix. I, I mean, I, I caught a couple episodes and he owns a store out in Arizona. I forgot the name of that show, but he was selling like knockoff like uh, Gucci t-shirts for 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I remember because Chinatown is like close to me here. I live in New Jersey and I remember going to those like to Chinatown and I would see those shirts that those those fake knockoffs selling for like 10 bucks mm -hmm. and now they're like 200 bucks because people are buying them because like you said are dressing like the 90s again yeah you know yeah. and <laughs> it's did you say that so mad at me when I, yeah like 92 93 because mm -hmm. i hunted down a long sleeve ben davis like shirt like, yeah. he, like the ones like snoop dogg was wearing yeah yeah <laughs> i mean, I mean. I, 
I found one and I would like rock that and I would like crease like the two <laughs> sides right here. My dad's like, you look like a cholo. Like, why? <laughs> I was like, a- yeah, like the gangster era, like in the early 90s. Uh, do, you well, see, do you see Marcel's comment? <laughs> Don't forget won- to get your, bl- where is it at? The blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, the last couple of shows we've been we've been talking about some <laughs> some old man issues here. Oh but. my goodness! Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, for me, it's like uh, it's crazy because Timberlands are back. I remember when I was mm-hmm. growing up, Timberlands in the nineties were so big, like everyone was wearing them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I, I talk about like old man stuff. Like I'm like a baby man. Like anytime I could get a chance to like take a nap i'm like all right time to- <laughs> yeah i'm like oh man i do that but it's by accident next thing i know i wake up like what the hell happened <laughs> yeah i'm like all right well i'm gonna just watch the one <laughs> you know it's like i'm gonna watch <laughs> but like yeah. um yeah no like the vintage like all right for example i didn't know like there was a huge like video game collecting like presence yeah. like the old the old video game cartridges yeah, yeah. like i'm like what that's two thousand dollars like mm-hmm. what like they get them graded like yeah, they, yeah. Like, years, it's like graded like 90 wow. yeah 90 grade 90 something perfect in the box like what the hell yeah and i'm like wow and then you have to think like you know there's a lot of those kids like you know that were uh, that grew up in the era are like yeah. adults now making some you know some money yeah. like that could afford that kind of stuff but yeah it's a big it's a big thing it's a nostalgia it's yeah. always always <clears throat> nostalgia is a big price to pay yeah. Yeah. Big well, seller. In, fact, in fact um during the shutdown right like the, mm-hmm. the 2020 shutdown there was this article that came out that all these like well to do like rich mm-hmm. you know wall street guys that are obviously around you know in in the 40s to like you know Did- early 50s instead of buying stock because the market was kind of all over the place because of covid they started investing in like pokemon cards pokemon cards vintage, yes vintage star wars figures mm-hmm. all these things that obviously gained so much value in the last 2 years Right, Pokemon yeah. cards. Yeah, like you could buy Pokemon cards. Really, I mean, not relatively cheap because you could still. I mean, you'd still pay a pretty penny. But right now, they're like freaking insane. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, like Pokemon cards, but I'm. I know the prices are insane. I almost want. I, I wonder if my brother still has his collection. I'm about to like go to my mom's house and start like looking for yeah. it, taking it and selling it and buying more Star Wars stuff and not telling him. Now the day that I see it, <laughs> when I see my kids playing pogs, that's mm-hmm. when I'll know. I'll be like, "All right, this is this is actually happening. They're playing pogs." You guys, yeah. my, Michael and Sean, you guys probably that's that was past you guys. It's yeah, like, yeah, that was definitely past. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. PJ, I remember the remember pogs. pogs, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember pogs. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my god! But it, it's just basically, I think now anything physical. Anything that is like a physical, see, everything is going digital and like you know, like non physical copies and stuff, dude. Like, when are CDs gonna be like a thing? Like, <laughs> oh, you got the you got the unopened Celine Dion CD. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like, yeah, man. How much is it going for? Uh, right. yeah. uh, uh, hey, hey, the Guns and Roses. Use your illusion to <laughs> double fist. Double yeah. That's uh, it got the Sam Goody sticker still on it. Oh yeah, yeah. No. those long ass like security devices. Remember those like uh, yeah. long, was just empty, empty, and then the CD on top. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Jeez. I still, I still got the CDs. You still, can't get rid of the social distortion yeah, CDs. I, 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 those I are that's my yeah. band. Yeah. 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 Because now everything's like streaming. So like Spotify, <laughs> Amazon Music, like people are not. Yeah. playing cds in their cars anymore yeah yeah John, are you are you a, a you obviously you like punk so there's there's this band called seven seconds i don't know if you're oh i, I, I like yeah, punk too, yeah. it. so they're on this like super like low-key indie label so they were never on streaming so mm-hmm. like i would always have to go back to my cds or my records to like yeah. listen to them uh but then just recently i apple music just put all their music on they're touring again i was like mm-hmm. nice oh, so I got all this like seven seconds here where I'm like a freaking. Yeah, man, that's crazy. awesome. 
Yeah, uh, it, it's crazy, and I just I just want to be on top of things so that like when then the next thing is like going big, like I'm like, oh shoot, I have that. Right. I'm solid. <laughs> you know exactly. Tell hey, you. I was just gonna say real quick off that subject. Did y'all see the new Ryan? Uh, was it Ryan Reynolds? The movie that he did. It's on Netflix. Oh, movie. I heard about that. The, but the time traveling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you saw it. It's good. I haven't. I've been. I went to watch it last night, and I dozed like not even three minutes into it. But I'm, I'm gonna watch it in the morning when I wake up. You know which movie I sat through and I didn't fall asleep, and it's a freaking damn good movie. It was Batman. The Batman. Oh know? yeah, Dude, Batman. That's awesome. Oh man, That's Michael, so did you watch cool. that? I haven't seen Batman yet. Oh, I've been wanting. I do so want to go see it. It's so good. So it's good. So good. And Colin Farrell. Oh my god. I I can't even looking at him. Like I'm trying to look at a picture of him, and I'm like, I just can't see. I don't see him. I can't hear him. I don't no. like. Is that Batman? Is that who the Colin Farrell? No, Colin Farrell. Um, penguin. 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 Oh, penguin. Colin Farrell. Hello. Duh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so he plays the Penguin. The yeah. Penguin. yeah. I can't yeah. recognize him. They he said they said that like he he want he went he walked into a Starbucks and no one recognized him, like no one. He was like dressed up as the uh, the penguin. Yeah, check this out. Watch, I'm gonna. He's like, I got you. And I was like, damn, he's got the accent too. Like he's got that. Yeah, he's got the Brooklyn accent down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be so hard to, to talk. To this, I, I'm this this movie's gonna win some awards, man. I think yeah, they, I yeah. so too. it's it's really good. The yeah. cinematographer is the same cinematographer from Rogue One. Is yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. Really? Look at that. Look, you don't see him. You don't yeah. see him. Wow. And the way he talks too, you're like, that's Colin Farrell. But look at the hair. Like his hair's yeah. all like thinning and like, man. Yeah. Dude, that's amazing. And yeah. it's, it's pretty much like, yeah, he it's like he's a mob. Like he's just more realistic, like a realistic penguin. I mean, all the characters. Like I it's believable. Almost to the point that like Batman seems like what a like what a weird like what a weirdo. Like just some vigilante, mm -hmm. like dressed in some random suit, like mm -hmm. fighting crime. Like it puts everything in perspective because you feel like you're in like in real world times like it feels real yeah so then you like think about it and it's like oh yeah imagine if some guy was just running around like helping the cops but dressed in this like yeah bat suit right oh shoot <laughs> but michael like seriously the cinematography is yeah. beautiful and it's the same guy the same cinematographer that did rogue one and dune so oh, all these God. shots yeah. are so beautiful. You're like, mm -hmm. wow! Like this Very really cool. captures like the dark yeah. side of uh, of Gotham. It's the best Gotham. Yeah, and the it's the best Gotham. The soundtrack, like, oh man, is it a good one? It's good. Oh yeah, it dude. Yeah, dude. dude. Like I, f I like want to walk into like the office, like with that right. Song. Something like, in the way. <laughs> I, in. I got like my hair down yeah. to that. So, like covering one, yeah. one of my eye, I'm, like all email. Like, yeah, don't, don't it's talk dark, but man, it's good. It hey, so Gabe, when when we had uh, Yoast uh, on on our show, um, yeah. I'm having to stand up because I'm. You know, I'm not in, in the gallery in my comfortable chair. I'm in this hardwood damn floor. So I got uh, my <laughs> ass is flatter than a. <laughs> but, but anyway, hey, so I was going to say, though, um, are you on board? If Because you know he's going to come out with that, that automobile. Who? Yeah. Oh, J Jazz Inc.? Yeah. 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 Oh, 100. But so, I think so is Hot Toys. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was they debating. Yeah. He was debating, but. I would support jazz just yeah. because I don't know. Hot Toys has really announced some a lot of projects that they never released, yeah. like the yeah. cockpit, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. Jazz Inc. jumped on in that cockpit. He's very he, respectful to them. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah. I think he's yeah. still on the fence on that Batmobile. I hope so he makes did, it. Did, did Hot Toys say that they're going to do that that deal? Yeah. They well, they teased it. So. Yeah, it's in the promo pics. Hey, dude, would you guys be surprised if if that some bitch isn't sitting at uh, celebration? I'll bet you a million dollars when you go to Star Wars Celebration, Hot Toys will have that 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 Batmobile there. What do you, you think? think? To like tease it? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, they'd have to, because you know they get all this stuff way earlier. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, because Hot Toys. Go ahead, Michael. I was just going to say they have time to do it, you know? Yeah, because mm -hmm. Hot Toys is doing the bat cycle right now. I saw that. You can get the, yeah. the motorcycle. Yeah. And yeah, it's a reasonable I, price, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like 315 yeah. yeah. This is but, where it comes down to, like, me in the Back to the Future stuff. Because all those things that I get that are non-Star Wars related, like um, Marty McFly, all, all that stuff is going in Denise's Barbie gallery. You know what I mean? So I, I just... <laughs> You know, okay. but I, I want that damn DeLorean. Yeah, yeah. that DeLorean looks nice. Um, yeah. I hope they fix the the tires. Like, you yeah. know, cause they were complaining. It doesn't like flush in well. Like, you know, yeah. it still kind of sticks out a little bit. But I'm sure they will fix it. Um, But like the, the Batmobile mobile was yeah. one of my favorite things in that movie, man. Yeah. Michael, you got it. I'm telling you, man. It's it's. Yeah. You know what? I might go see it tomorrow. Yeah. If, uh, it's I'll long. Haley with me. Yeah, that's what I hear. But it's, but it's not. It doesn't feel like a bat. It doesn't feel like a superhero movie. No. That's mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like it feels yes. like, like a detective. Like yes, dark. Seven. Yeah. But yeah so not, not to get into the story as a spoiler though. Is it is that the um? What am I going to say? Is it the same type of story though? Like his parents? Is he? Is it like a renew of a Batman? Yeah, or is it? No. How is Batman introduced? They sprinkle. Is they sprinkle little things in. Yes. His yeah. Parents die. Yes. It's but, his second year as Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The way the parents die is totally different. The backstory of the parents are totally different. Mm -hmm. Like even the characters, right? Because you obviously you have like the Riddler, you have Penguin. You got Catwoman and then a secret one and then but they're all sprinkled in, right? Like they're all like I don't know. It just but, doesn't no doesn't what I kind of like about the car. Sorry to cut you off, Gabe. No, no. There's a little delay. What I was gonna say is I, I think that it looks more of a realistic, even mm -hmm. though those other Batmobiles in the past have been badass, this one looks like it'd be more of a realistic if I was gonna turn myself into a bat, you know, it, mm -hmm. You know that that's how it would be, right? Yep. Yeah, because yeah. even most of his gadgets in the movie were fairly practical. Yeah, you, know? you can be like, I can make something like that. You know, yeah, it's not, that's not yeah. it's not overboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. his costume too, like his his actual costume, you could see the stitch marks. You could kind of see like very cool. He made it himself, kind of homemade shit. Yeah, well, like yeah. supposedly the backstory, and I don't I don't know if they confirmed it, but the the bat symbol is a gun, right? It's like the gun barrel like or the the handle of the gun yeah. the ones that killed his parents i, I don't yeah know. yeah that's that's true that's true i read some of that something like that but. yeah it's it's basically this is the start of year two for batman and he's kind of like figuring out things right like he's still like depressed from his parents dying and he's like very like closed and like you know like he like he even said like he's nocturnal like the whole time mm -hmm. so he just spends most of his time like fighting crime but it's michael i'm telling you man it's really good and like you said everything's like practical it's like he yeah. built it himself because yeah. he has no help it's him it's yeah. year two of him, of him being batman so yeah. and yeah. he straight up says it he's like i mean one of the first lines which i mean you'll see is like the city's falling apart there's like so much crime he's like i can't be at all places at all times wow can so so he like says like he's like I what's what they're scared of is is the darkness. They're scared of potentially that I'm gonna be there. So like it, it's kind of cool that he explains kind of oh, psychologically what the bad guys mm -hmm. are scared of. Yeah. Oh, that's badass. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. And it's kind of yeah. weird that we haven't brought it up in the three hours and twelve minutes and, <laughs> and fourteen seconds. Um, that <laughs> the Obi One trailer. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah, that's surprising. Okay. Yeah. But, but Do a quick run. I, I know this could be another hour, so we'll keep it, keep it Ugh. quick. But but real quick, let let's let's do this. Let's start with Gabe, and let's get your feedback of of the trailer and your thoughts. Okay, so I didn't think it was gonna hit me as hard as it did. I really didn't. I started getting text messages and messages when it came out, and I was like, yeah, me I was too. In court. And I was like, oh shit, hold on. I like literally stepped out of the courtroom <laughs> and like I was like, I gotta excuse myself really quick and I gotta listen to this. Um, and I gotta watch it. 
So I, I started watching it and yeah, immediately, you know, it starts off great. As soon as I saw little baby Luke, yeah. it immediately I got like chills and I was like, oh my God. But this part, the, as soon as I heard the duel of fates, like yeah. I, I didn't think that was going to hit me as hard. I got a lump in my throat. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? Just that music, right? Just hearing that come out, I was like, oh crap. And then, yeah, after that, see, the thing is, I haven't watched Rebels. So, again, uh, some of those, like, you know, like the Inquisitors and, mm-hmm. and those guys, I'm not familiar with. So, I mean, obviously, I know what they look like and I've seen people, you know, talk about them, but I don't think that part hit me as hard because I, mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with them. But just the music and seeing Luke, those two things, like, it, it hit me hard. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Matt's collection. That's funny. Yeah, Your Honor, uh, uh, can you excuse me one second? I got. <laughs> oh, I, I was straight up telling all the other attorneys that were kind of waiting to for for the judge to call. I was like, "Hey, the new Kenobi trailer came out," <laughs> and one of the attorneys is like. Oh, I know. I heard. Oh, I'm gonna watch it. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna watch it right now. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it right now. I can't wait. I'm like, uh, but yeah. What about you, Michael? Would... Uh, let me go last, Sean. Okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, I, I I'm more excited because we already know the Obi Wan character. We didn't have to wait 30 years like the Boba Fett show and anticipate him being something that we created in our minds. Yeah. So you know, and they're talking about this Obi Wan character is going to be a broken down Obi Wan. You know, after Order 66, he's lost his fallen brothers and now he's stuck on this planet where he's just going to sit there and bake (laughs) in the sun for how long. But yeah, like Gabe said, like soon as the Duel of Fates hits, you just get goosebumps seeing the young Luke, the Inquisitor. Like the trailer already looks better than the entire Boba Fett series. Mm -hmm. It really feels more cinematic. It's just, and I think having this series is a, 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 we it's a much needed bridge to bridge the prequels into the you know like Rogue One and the and the, the original trilogy, so I think this is a much needed uh, series, and I just wish it was more than six episodes long. Yeah, but well, yeah, super excited. Um, Before yeah. we go to PJ, real quick, so let me just ask because I I'm not into the um, it's not that I'm not into it, but I haven't seen the. So I don't know the timeline of the of the, the rebels or whatever y'all call that. The the, the mm-hmm. so is it possible though in this time frame though that uh, Maul can 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 is Maul already dead or he's alive? Yeah, he's alive. Okay, so there's a good chance we're going to see him walking around with some metal legs and shit or what? It would be awesome. <laughs> no, I'm there, there, there's rumors that he might. Yes, be so that we, we're in that timeline though, right? Yeah, where that can happen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, somebody posted like a. I'll look for it while PJ goes. Here, go. Uh, oh, you- I was gonna say, uh, there's rumors that Kathleen Kennedy is uh, considering uh, season two, um, but mm-hmm. like I like I said in like in during uh, the podcast is that like this I've been following this uh, Kenobi thing for ever since they they sort of teased it or announced it. It was supposed to be a movie, but then it got shut down. And then it got, uh, it was supposed to start filming in 2021, uh, but they shut it down for, no, 2020, they, they were supposed to film it, but they shut it down for a year because they didn't like the uh, the writing of the uh, the script. It, they said it was too dark. So Kathleen Kennedy wanted it to be a little bit more, like, you know, a little bit more lighter in, in per se, um, or just breathe some new hope into the, uh, into the series. So they had to do some, Actually, they they actually hired a new writer to write the whole thing again. So I'm kind of skeptical about that. But with that being said, the trailer looks really good. The 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 music, the music is the the highlight of the whole trailer. Yeah, the John Williams music with the, the Battle, Battle of the Heroes, Heroes. Uh, in the beginning. Um, Battle of the Heroes. You got Duel of Fates, um, and you got some beautiful shots. You got Kenobi, um, and the Inquisitors. So. You know, I don't want to take up too much time, but the Inquisitors, um, they showed up in Rebels, yes, but then um, there is a I highly recommend this graphic novel. It's a graphic novel now. Is the the second Darth Vader run, 
written by Charles Sewell. And that is where it, this is like this run is immediately taking place after Revenge of the Sith, where he goes, no, right? And it, it the story continues from that point on. And in the in, in the comic books, he actually tries to kill Emperor. And but the emperor already has him like in in that suit, so he like electrocutes him, and he can't do anything. So you already know that the emperor has in control of him. But the Sith Inquisitors show up in that in that uh, comic book, and they kind of explain their backstory and how all of them were created. So it's cool to see that, and also the video game, the La- the Jedi Fallen Order, kind of connects to this uh to this show because that that there is that water what's that called that water like like uh what's that called castle right like mm-hmm. that castle in the water that's actually a sith inquisitor like you know like it's a training fort, facility fortress. right yeah it's yeah. a training facility and that connects oh. to the video games because in the video games that's where the the hero f- faces off with spoiler vader mm. in that training facility so yeah, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of connections. So it's going to bridge a lot of stuff together. Yeah, and Michael, like Kenobi's going on the exact same time Solo movie was was going on. So Darth Maul's alive, and he's head of the Crimson Dawn. Mm-hmm. And then right after Kenobi, then you've got the Andor series, which it's goes it. on right along with Rebels. So that's yeah, so of- this is what it says. So during yeah. Kenobi, these are the characters that are alive. Okay. And the possible oh, that's cool. keep up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So obviously Tarkin, the Emperor is still there. Obviously Vader, you know, and uh, Han Solo should be obviously. Yep. Young Solo. That same. Yeah. Young Solo. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously Luke and Leia, right? They're little little kids. Mm-hmm. Um, did yeah. you? Did you? People were saying that there the Solo was in the trailer. Oh, so is that know, the one with the gun? Yeah. They were That's saying that was him looking at the, the the Sith Inquisitors. It could be. And you know who else? I mean, there's another possibility, although it might be a little too distracting, mm-hmm. is um, young uh, Lando, right? Because weren't they going to do a Lando show? Or aren't I they doing so. a Lando show? Yeah, supposedly they're doing a Lando mm-hmm. show. Yeah. So, so but, with, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, Don- Dan- 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 Donald? Donald. Danny? Donald. Yeah, Donald. yeah. Yeah, but overall, I, I'm I'm a big Anakin fan, so I can't wait for this show. I I've actually liked was looking forward more to this show than Book of Boba, even before Book of Boba got released. So, um, a lot of good things, and you know what's what's really like exploding now is the comic books, because mm. now there's a lot of like of these first appearances in these comic books, like are just like skyrocketing. Like I have the first appearance of those Sith Inquisitors. And now that book is like 800 bucks. Damn. Like, imagine, like, you go from a $3 book to yeah. 800 And imagine you bought, like, a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And you're like. Yeah. 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 Um, is it true that the Inquisitors are technically um, the Temple Guards? Like, the Jedi Temple Guards? That The, like... gr- the Grand Inquisitor is... Um, some of those other regular Sith Inquisitors could be Jedi's or Force sensitive um, guys that got turned in that, mm-hmm. that training facility where they like, like, like you know, tortured them into becoming Sith Inquisitors. Oh, cool. man! So yeah, it's. it's I good. mean, I can't wait. Well, okay, Michael, what did what did what did you think? What were your your thoughts? Sucked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so, so honestly, uh, what, what I would really love to see is not all – I'm hoping that the – we're not getting back into all of the digital effects of showing all of Lucas's new gadgets and ships flying everywhere and all that stuff, you know, but – because that's what – when y'all heard that kick-ass music, that's what I saw from that. I did love, obviously, seeing Luke Skywalker. I loved that. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see the first three episodes of Ben chilling in his little hut and, you know, killing a couple sand people, you know what I mean? Or, mm-hmm. you know, just hang, seeing Luke on this badass little speeder shooting womp rats and he just talks to him, doesn't know who he is, but just kind of like he's checking in on him. And 
uh, just a, a little hangout time with little Luke, you know, and yeah. I'd rather see that stuff for two hours of just Star Wars old school than all the other shit that I know we're going to see because a lot of it, like all the stuff that PJ is talking about right now, I, I, I don't you know, force sensitive and all this stuff that, that I know Matt's collections, the guy to talk to about a lot of that shit, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know any of that crap. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like these Jedis that are flipping the, the, the quick things around and look, I know they've got to have the action and, you know, people nowadays, the kids nowadays, they would think ET is the most boring movie in the world. So, <laughs> but I just, I, I just like simple, you know, and I just, I'm afraid it's not going to be that way. I'm very excited though. That they are going to show little Luke. I hope they show a, a Skyhopper, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they show. Yeah. What do you call it? The yeah, the T sixteen. The T sixteen. Mm -hmm. They got to show that thing. Yeah. Um, but um, definitely, I'm so glad that it's Obi Wan is Ewan McGregor because he's badass. And yeah. I, th I think he did do a fantastic job, you yeah. know, acting in those first movies and. You know? I'm sure. I'm sure you, we'll probably see. Um, what's his name? Jimmy Jimmy Smith, right? Jimmy. Smith, yeah, Jimmy Smith. Right? Uh, Bell yeah. I'm sure, right? They're gonna mm -hmm. show Bell Organa with little baby Leia, right? Little that'd be sick. Leia, yeah. Right? I mean, that seems like yeah, a natural, <laughs> a natural thing to, to yeah. Do, but no. far from Death Star's right, dude. When Michael cried when the Duel of Fates came out. I did. I was like. <laughs> You got to be sure. The wrong <laughs> this, this is not where I'm wanting to go. I mean, this some bitch stayed on the on the desert planet. And he didn't go anywhere, you know. But no, anyway. and that, and, but that's that's what I said early on. I, I think you would you're gonna you're doing yourself a disservice if you watch Kenobi without watching at least some of those cartoons to mm -hmm. to catch up at least with some stuff that to cool. understand the story. The the part that's hard, Gabe. You just said it cartoons yeah it's just hard to it's hard to and look it's just it is what it is nobody knew when they were making the cartoons that they were going to be doing this now right no. but it's just it's just so hard for me to just keep up with everything yeah. and then there's a book that you got to read before you watch that you know i i just yeah what, you know four five and six i'm golden you know rogue one i mean excuse, what is it uh yeah rogue one and, I, and that's it you know i, I yeah. just but I am I'm, I am looking forward to it. It's something to be excited about. And guess what? It's going to be going on during celebration. So, yeah, it's going to be. A, I'm sure there's going to be a panel. I'm sure the whole cast. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they're. Sure. I think people are going to be in celebration when they uh, release the first episode, right? It's yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah that's, yeah, that's what I meant. That's probably what's going to be. Yeah, because it yeah it comes on the 25th. Oh, yeah. Celebration yeah. starts on the 26th. Yeah. So, so people I'm, on 26 are going to be like, oh, my God, you see that? You know? Yeah. yeah. yeah they, they did that on purpose. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They did. I'm thinking that's when they moved the dates. You know, that's mm. might yeah. have been one of the reasons. Yeah. yeah. I, I I mean, I, I hope we see Qui-Gon as a force ghost uh, communing. Or yeah. like you said, like uh, Michael, you don't want to see Qui-Gon? Not at all. No, <laughs> no dude. Because yeah. I was going to say that would be fun. I will find you and I will kill you. That's why I look. I, I just do not want to. I don't want to see that dude, man. I know, I know. but you know, I, he was, I, I respect you, though, man. I know, of course, uh, but I just think that they're saying that like uh, that would be part of like uh, Kenobi's training because that's how he'll learn how to become a force yeah. host. Yeah, yeah, you know? he has to. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to learn. Yeah, so we'll see. Because he said right, he says that at the end of right. Of yeah, uh, of, three. of uh, three. Yeah. Yeah, he straight up says like that he needs to learn this special ability. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's just more yeah. Star Wars, good Star Wars, at least you know. Yeah, and, yeah, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick and choose. I'm gonna pick some episodes for Michael and for you, Sean, too. Like, I mean, yeah. I know you watch the. I know you watch some of them, but I mean, yeah. did you watch the Darth Maul ones, Sean? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. It's the backstory. Yeah. yeah. Well, you haven't seen them either, Sean? No, I was kind of with Michael. Like, it was so hard for me because it's a cartoon. And then I think it was in, they were already up to episode or season six in Clone Wars when I was like, all right, well, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, and me too. The first too. two seasons are so hard to get through because they're so childish. Yeah. So then I just said, screw it. 
and then the seventh season came out. So I watched it. And then, like I said, the, the Ahsoka essentials, I watched all those cause she started getting popular cause Amanda. So I was like, well, I got to learn more about this character. Mm. So I don't know if I'll ever go back and watch it from the beginning. Hey, but, but okay. the Darth Maul one, listen, so the, the, the Darth Maul and I'm everybody watching. I'm sorry. Cause I don't know all the others, but the Darth Maul and Obi-Wan when they meet and they're kind of like a respect sitting at a campfire. And you, oh, and that's like, rebels. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. But you said, so did you see that one? Yeah. Yeah. I've watched, okay. I've watched Michael, honestly, it's yeah. a cartoon. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It's hard to watch the cartoons, but yeah. rebels is so good. The yeah. story's good. You get a few filler episodes, Yeah, but it's really good to watch. And they're like mm. 20 minute episodes. So you're not like, mm. I, I would mm. give it a shot. Cause like yeah. filler episodes, that was book of Boba. Every episode yeah. was filler episodes. Yeah, you don't get a, get too many with Rebels. Well, no, but I think one good episode to watch, I think, or like good kind of little sequence to watch in um, in uh, Clone Wars is kind of the demise of uh, of, Anakin. Uh, of of Anakin. Yeah, but no, no, of uh, Darth Maul, mm-hmm. right? When when they start finding him, when they find him in that cave. Like just watching. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. That's a great episode because, like, just you see how crazy he is. Like, he's like literally like insane because he's Mm -hmm. filled with hatred and he's living. I think I remember. I think I saw that one. Yeah, and that's just such a good thing to to know and like how they bring him back and you know just so you could kind of feel the the hatred that he has not only for for uh, for uh, Kenobi but kind of for the emperor too and for kind of how they did them wrong you know mm. yeah yeah and That's... and the thing oh, i'm sorry sure no go ahead go ahead go ahead no uh well i was gonna say is that like you know with with the mall it's like you see that progression not only that you see his brother and like how yeah. both of them were wrong by the emperor um but again like how they were just pawns of like what the emperor was grand scheme of things right but what i love too was that like how they showed um anakin like his point of view like that's why in Re- revenge of the Sith, he's like in my point of view the jedi are evil well they were they were like very arrogant and they were like very cock- cocky son of a you know bees right <laughs> i don't know if i could curse here but um no but like yeah but basically they were cocky they didn't like you know they did their own thing and they thought they were like the the police of the whole galaxy yeah. you know but you know, but they let one person manipulate their whole their whole thing. It's crazy. So, but yeah, I yeah I I'm ex- I'm excited for it while also maintaining my expectations. Like, yeah, just because of the, what's happened, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm also kind of skeptical too be, with with the recent like article that saying that Kathleen Kennedy wanted to make this a little bit more like a little bit more like uplifting. So I'm like, oh man, I don't know, man. Well, again, she did the same thing for Rogue One, right? She she did make some changes, and I know I don't know if people know this, but she's the one that was responsible in bringing that Vader scene into Rogue One. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a, a Kathleen Kennedy hater because nobody. That's good. <laughs> well, well, let me just tell you though, nobody look. She's she's. You know, you call her captain. You know, she is the president. And, um, but nobody knows the facts, you know, of of the decision making on everything. Sure, everybody mm-hmm. goes to her about things, but, you know, can you imagine being in her shoes? You know, that's, it, it's actually why George Lucas hauled ass, you know, because mm-hmm. you just can't make everybody happy, you know. But I am the same person that says that I, everything that she's been involved with, you know, I, I just, you know, Rogue One, you just said it. I, I liked that. And, and I like mm-hmm. Mandalorian, you know, but I, I just don't know about. She's super cool. I got to say she, me and her talked once and it was a hello and a hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? And, you know, I was just like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. It was Kathleen Kennedy. So, yeah. oh, she's, I mean, she she's also involved in like every single movie in the every. Age. So, yeah, not I mean, Star Wars. All of the Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, yeah. I mean, pretty much you name any franchise, she's yeah. one of the executive 
producers. Yeah. And so, but I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think all Disney has a big, a big say also, you know, I think Disney has their hand in it, not just her, but you know, I'm sure she still has to kind of run it by, yeah, you know, by the Disney side. Yeah, I just don't like some of the sayings that she's she's some of the things that she said in the past is that like, you know, this is not the Star Wars is not for the new, it's not for the old Star old Wars fan. Yeah, yeah, and, and that really resonated and really bothered me a lot. So I'm like, are you sure? Because we're the ones with the money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, um, but maybe she means more like like Michael. I think Michael's a perfect example of that, right? Like the new star Wars is not necessarily for, for the like original trilogy fans. Right. And the, the, mm -hmm. the ones that are hardcore, like prequel haters, like sequel hater, like it's, it's not, you know, because they are going to try to take it to this other direction, but, yeah. but I think they should just leave that alone. Just leave the original trilogy. Stop plucking from from over there yeah we like agree. mando where mando just completely separate just totally mm. different like mm. i think that because you like mando right michael like you're in oh i did i yeah. like there was a couple of uh, one of the shows i episodes i didn't like but i loved like them like messing with his ship the jaw was and him jumping on the sand crawler and shooting like that those are the <laughs> things that i like i like that shit you know all yeah. the other crap you know like the and spiders in that one little cave thing. I, dude, that's a Macquarie. That's a concept. That's I know, a and I know, and you got that. I know, but yeah. I just, those are the things I just, I don't know. Yeah. But I think, you know, at least, you know, uh, you know, Favreau gets it, right? Like, I think he was able to kind of hit both sides, like, you know, the old and the new. And mm -hmm. I, that's, I'm a firm believer in that. So like you can do both. You just can't just do new and forget about the past. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's just you kind of have to do both because it starts, it sparks up conversation. You yeah. know, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, can you tell me about this character? You know, and uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, we'll, sh we'll see. You know, I just hope that they don't ruin the characters I love because that would suck if they, uh, you know, they change the way I see Kenobi and I, the way I see Anakin, you know, that's what I'm scared of. And then next, thing you know, we're like, Oh, yeah. here we are. They ruined our characters that we loved and grew up with again. So, yeah. You know, you know what I'd like, Sean? I, and I, I mean, kind of, I'm just so curious because of our generation of, of the films that we grew up to love. And, and, you know, we got people like theory and, and PJ, that and PJ, you're you're you're. I'm not saying you're young, but you're. I I don't know. You're kind of like. Yeah, you're kind of right in the middle. Yeah, PJ's, me and PJ are the same age. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. So, but that being said, like theory, perfect example theory that just went and bought his new Lamborghini, and um, <laughs> and and because of his Star Wars show, and his knowledge of Star Wars. But you know, I don't care if he's got ten Lamborghinis, he'll never be able to sit down and have that feeling that we did. When we yeah. And the reason that I'm bringing that up is because it's just so crazy. Cause you're never going to please everybody, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, I wonder what like Gabe, your beautiful little girls when, you know, they've seen star Wars, but I wonder how, how it is, how they see it through their eyes versus how Sean and I saw it in the seventies. You know what I mean? It's just, things are so different now. And I just don't know if it'll ever, be the same if you can ever introduce somebody to Star Wars and their characters and, and have that same that same holy shit that, that yeah. Sean had, you know? Because when we saw it, there was nothing like it. Yeah. It was just, it was original. Like, I mean, it changed yeah. the way all movies are made. And yeah, just to see that back then when you didn't have anything like it, yeah. that's the feeling where you, the, the aha when you walk out of the theater you're like what did i just see like it's mm -hmm. you've never seen anything like it mm -hmm. now kids are i mean you're you know you got the new generation watching mando but they're also watching marvel and all these other movies yeah. with these special effects yes yes so i'm not saying they're numb to it i'm sure they love it but that's just that different feeling you know that that time yeah. that's that's what no 
I think that's what we cherish as the, you know, I always say I'm more of an OT guy, but yeah. I also try to keep more of an open mind, you know, like mm -hmm. I love Mando, you know, but the cartoons are hard to watch and it's not because of the stories of the cartoons. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a cartoon and it's, you know, you get a certain age and it, it's hard to hold my attention Yeah, because I have good intentions when I sit down to watch it. And then like halfway through, I'm catching myself on my phone. And then I was mm -hmm. like, well, I'll come mm -hmm. back. And what's bad? They're only 20 minute episodes. So mm -hmm. that's where I kind of struggle mm -hmm. with that. But you're right, Michael. Like when, when you see it, when there's nothing else like it, mm -hmm. it's I'm not saying it makes you more of a Star Wars fan or you're like, oh, it's mine and not, you know, no. but it's that feeling is just it's ingrained in you for the rest yeah. of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that, and, and you're right. That's that's the one thing. Right. I mean, your generation, our generation. I think it's still like all yeah. the, all those. We, we literally it. saw the transition of special effects, mm. yeah, um, the storytelling, like mm -hmm. through the through film, and like literally, like from blue screen, right? With Star Wars, like revolutionized blue screen, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, it revolutionized, like you know, in the prequels. I mean. CGI. I mean, they literally invented that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like and Jurassic Park, right? Like we saw like how it started advancing and getting crazy yes. to the point where we're watching now a movie where we can't tell the difference, you know, between reality and, and CGI. And yeah, kids can't have that anymore. There's zero chance that they could see that progression. Right. Yeah. Unless like, yeah, some three-dimensional crazy like yeah. you know put these goggles on and you're like some right crazy like, yeah yeah, yeah. something mm -hmm. there's just no way and then the storytelling too like all those stories have been told right isn't there they say there's like five basic plot lines or something like that right and they're just the same stories being retold different ways there's just no way that they're ever gonna get the same yeah. stories that we got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this the thing too is that like, you know, with uh I'm sorry, Gabe, I, I probably cut you off. I'm so no, sorry. No, no. Um, no, but it was just like it's just one of those things where you know, this day and age, like this like the sequels were supposed to capture the younger generation, my kids' generation, right? Like in terms of like, okay, we gonna I'm gonna bring them to watch Star Wars and have that bonding moment, right? But what kind of bonding moment am I going to have with my kids when I'm like, oh, my God, what did they do to Luke? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's yeah. not like the bonding moment when I take my kids to watch Spider-Man, right? Oh, Dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, that is Spider-Man, you know, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, or I watch Batman. They're like, oh, Dad, Dad, that was cool. Batman kicked butt. You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and – that's the bonding moment you have with your kids and you tell them, oh, you know, Adam West and, hey, you know, 89 Batman. And, and you, you you have those conversations. I can't have any conversations with my kids about sequels. Actually, they don't even really care about the sequels. Mm -hmm. What they care about? The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian captured their yeah. hearts. Grogu captured their hearts. Yeah. But, you know? yeah, yeah. So – that's where I'm, my point is, is that you can try to, you, there's a balance. You, you're not going to please everyone, obviously, but there should be that balance where you're like, okay, you capture a little bit of like the older uh, crowd and then the newer crowd, the original trilogy, the prequels and the, you know, now the newer stuff. There yeah. is a balance. It's just that some people just don't want to do that. They want to have their own, you know, they want to erase the past and move forward with their, no. Whatever characters they're going to make so that they can make the most money. I'm not sure if they're paying royalties to Lucas with some of their, you know what I'm saying? Like, is there mm -hmm. such a thing? It's, it's, mm -hmm. I'm curious to find out, you know? But then I also, I also think about like, like Sean's experience, right? With your dad, like, mm -hmm. you know, him building these, these awesome, you know, worlds for you. Like you guys, like PJ is saying too, like that it's a bonding experience with, with your kids. I tried that. I tried that with the sequels. You know, I, I took my daughter to every single, you know, premiere and I really was like pumping her up about Ray. Right. I was like, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. look at Ray and BBA, look how cute he is. And like, you know, and really try to get her into that. But again, it, it gets to the point where like kids now these days too, they're, they're more, you know, 
interested in their iPad, what what yeah. game they're playing. Oh so yeah, it's different. Like their attention, you know, they can't sit there and watch a yeah two and a half hour movie really with like really paying attention, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's different. And you're right, Michael. That there's there's no way. I don't think they can get that experience. Anymore. Yeah. No, they, they can't. You know, like I, I talked to a lot of my coworkers that watched the, uh, the the original trilogy in the movie theaters, and he used to tell me he's like, "Oh, I used to watch it like nine times, you know, like yeah. you know, like in, yeah. in like two days, like he would just keep on going, coming back, coming back, coming back to watch it over and over again." Because the first movie, there was nothing like it. There was nothing like it, yeah. uh, which is true. Like you look at all the movies in that era, like what's cl- what comes close? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna. But yeah, man. Well, this is this is a great. Oh man, <laughs> we could keep talking. It'll I know we could take a talk yeah, all the, night. The sun's yeah. coming up. I know, I know. You guys, you guys are about to lose an hour. We almost should just wait another fifteen well, minutes. You so should. We, so it'd be a five-hour so show. Watch, yeah, so we could watch you guys like jump yeah. and time travel. Oh that's, yeah, uh, I, I could tell my wife. Yeah, I went to bed at three a.m. She'd be like, what? Be like, what well, time change, you know? Yeah, yeah we, we've got 15 more minutes. Huh. Yeah. Armando says uh, Close Encounters was close to... Was it Close Encounters? Uh, meaning in terms of like other movies besides Star Wars that were like revolutionary. Well, yeah, I mean, think about it. Planet of the Apes. Like, yeah, I love um, Close Encounters. encounters. Like, I, that's one of my comfort movies. I Damn mean, those dirty apes. No, yeah, I mean, all those movies. I mean, even like Back to the Future, you know... Mm-hmm. Indiana Jones, like just those kind of oh, events. You meant to, hey, you meant to say Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, <laughs> you know, Temple of Doom, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we always, we yeah, always you don't know, PJ. Talk, yeah. Oh, I know. I Sean, yeah, Sean knows. Uh, here, I'll mm-hmm. ask PJ. PJ, what's your favorite Back to the Future? Oh, two. There you go. What? Thank you. Thank you, PJ. I, I give you a high five down. Yeah. Here. Man, two really? Yeah, right. Like, yeah, I mean, I love one, one, but there's Sean, only one. It's the first one. John, don't don't worry, dude. They're they're, oh. they're, they're hey, they're freaking clueless. It's a <laughs> first. One. The first <laughs> one's amazing. It, it, <laughs> is, no, amazing. it is amazing. It is. Oh, I will jump in front of a train brigade, <laughs> but when it comes to shit like this, man, he is just fucking clueless. And then and for Indiana Jones, <laughs> my favorite Indiana Jones is Temple of Doom. Mm-hmm. And Michael gets really mad at me. Well, this game, it pisses me off because it's just, you know. It's we, a sequel. <laughs> Temple of Doom is a sequel, right? Yeah. It's yeah. The one with, the, with the little. But it's I, the one I, where he pulls the heart out of the guy's chest. Yes. That's yes. Okay. okay. Not the Jones, Dr. Jones. They will Hanum, become. Hanum Shema. Hanum Shema. Hello. Sean. Now, growing up, Temple of Doom was my favorite because I think at my age, I was influenced by it more, but Raiders is a much better movie. Yeah. Like when you watch it, you go back and watch it. Like Raiders is like almost a perfect movie. It yeah, is. like it's it so good. I one. like the Last Crusade too. I thought that the was Last good. Crusade was good. Like I just that was, okay. that was okay with Sean Connery. Like yeah, you know, I thought that was a perfect cast. Like yeah. both of them, they wow. had a good banter. Sean, I think Sean, Sean's trolling us here with this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Apart from Death Star, I'm really surprised that that what that he's the same as me. Yeah, it's like God dang. Yeah. No, but it's yeah. okay. I mean, there's a few of you guys out there that don't know what the hell's going on, <laughs> but it's all right. It's okay. Yeah, but see the thing. I, I see one thing I love about your show is like everyone can have a, a little bit, you know, not in a little bit, but difference oh, of opinion and still have fun, man. That's that's what, yeah. that's what makes it great. Absolutely. I mean. Well, but it just, it's just funny. I I love seeing that. I love seeing that because I think it is still a generational thing, right? I don't know. I'd have to see how how old um, Far From Death Star is, but I'm I'm kind of curious, right? Us that are like in the early forties right now, Mm -hmm. I think we're going to gravitate towards Back to the Future 2, Temple of Doom, Batman 89. Like, you know what I mean? Like these, those, those movies that are very kind of more entertaining, a little more like, yeah, um, more special effect driven. Yeah. That's all it is, is special effects. Cause and then you, yeah. And then you guys just kind of uh, in, in your fifties, right. Mm-hmm. Are probably going to be more 
now okay close to your 48 48 late 40 okay late 40s <laughs> early 50s you guys were a little bit older when 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 you watched those so you got to experience the first ones mm-hmm. as they came out and mm-hmm. like really experience that that thrill right mm-hmm. as opposed to us we probably caught it kind of on the back end yeah right and then so we got to watch them kind of all together and then we got to pick our favorite one as opposed to you guys watched them as they were they like, came out. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Dude. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Chris, I, I, I mean, we could all agree. Crystal, <clears throat> Crystal's skull was hard. Oh, oh my God. That, erase that from your memory banks. Now what was that, about? <laughs> that was just the worst. Movie. <laughs> Actually, you know, Armando says, he goes, I like citizen Kane and Casablanca. Actually, I, like I said, like, Thank God I wa- I took that film class in high school, and I I took that film class so that I could take a nap. It was my last period of the day, and I that was my the best class I've taken. In yeah, high school. that's cool. And uh, I really love Citizen Kane, uh, yeah. like way ahead of its time. Casablanca, one yeah. of the best love stories, yeah, ever made. Like you have to think about it, like what he did, you know. And that famous scene, a famous line, here's looking at you, kid. Like, come on, no, you know, things like that. Like, you can never, those are like, those are good, good movies. 12 Angry Men, yeah. Well, Citizen Kane, I think Citizen Kane is one of those films that you could probably kind of equate to like Star Wars and all Mm -hmm. these because he revolutionized like the camera angles and the types of shots. Mm -hmm. It was unheard of, like, you'd get these like over, like like shots of, of, you know, from the ceiling coming down or mm-hmm. really low shots coming up. And that yeah. was unheard of back then. Like it used right. to just be like very like traditional film, right? Like yeah. the shoulder, like, so. Yeah. Those are, yeah. They don't make movies like that anymore, but you know, I appreciate those movies that did come, uh, come out, especially 12 angry men. And you're a lawyer, right? Like, you know, yeah. that's like, yeah. hearing, like watching that, that movie, and yeah, it's just like so good, you know. Goonies, someone said. Sean yeah, Spielberg. Goonies, and and that's the thing. A lot of them are gonna go back to Steven Spielberg, and I think Steven Spielberg kind of defined a generation, right? Yeah, really, really. And it wasn't George Lucas, I don't think. I think it was Steven Spielberg. Yeah, yeah. I cried in ET. If that makes. <laughs> yeah, ET, yeah. ET oh. was uh, good. No, yeah. yeah, I love ET. Mm-hmm. Well, Wait, guys, are we really trying to get this? this yeah, nine, nine, ten minutes. Nine, my, nine my, minutes. My ass is hurting. Let's let's, I, let's, 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 let's let's enter the DeLorean and put in the time, and we're gonna test it out one hour. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? We're gonna send Sean and PJ one hour and go ahead. We're going into time. We're going <laughs> back to the future, far from this. Man, I'm sorry. The first one's so good. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry, Michael. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say Far From Death Star. I, I think that you would really enjoy it. It's really, really cool. You know, what's really you know, cool is I was able to talk to a few of the cast members. And when I pitched the story to them, they loved it, including Henry Thomas. So, mm. But, you know, it's all who you know in the biz. Yeah. You know? uh, Jaws, um, that movie still f me up man i can't no seriously like that no movie, scary times i i can't go in the water yeah. i get i still get scared like i'll go in the shallow and in, in, in the ocean obviously but i can never go past like the. i swim know. with sharks all the time i surf uh, a lot i surf uh, a lot yeah. in the summer so they're all around us hey sean have you watched space balls oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah dark helmet yeah yeah, I mean it's so satire. It's so it's just so stupid. It's funny. Yeah, I know Sean knows because he watches the show. Barf. He, he refuses. <laughs> Michael refuses to watch Spaceballs. Yeah, it's what? probably it's probably hard to watch now. But when it first oh, came out, it was like, oh, this is Star Wars, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah, oh. I can't even believe George Lucas let it happen. Yeah, you, you but, can't um, make, make those movies now. Hey, you know what? Since y'all talked about Jaws, you know, Gabe came up with a really really cool idea of of having like in the restaurant and like, you know, cause we're going to be, it's going to be kind of eighties themed, you know, but mm-hmm. wouldn't it be badass to have like jaws, like his head, like sticking out of the wall or in the mm-hmm. ceiling or something. Cause I can make it happen. You know, I've thought about that. 
be cool. Wow, that'd be you remember sick. Gabe talking about that? I, I yeah, but I I think the skull, like not like oh that the just the, on it, just yeah. like the teeth, like just like mm, yeah. 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 Just like people might person. not know though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Smile, you son of a bitch! <laughs> that, that, that was just the best. That was I, so, I I you know I watched that. I loved. Oh, the, that that was just so great. That was a good movie, but it I've, was. Scary. I've only watched part one. I've never watched the other ones. So. Yeah, they, I've never watched all the way through. I remember going to the movies and seeing Jaws 3D, and that's when oh, 3D started getting really oh, popular. Yeah. And you had to wear the 3D glasses. Yeah, with the Jaws. Red mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Dennis Quaid. Yeah, yeah. He's super cool ass dude. I when we I was working on that movie The Alamos, I uh, played a character um and I got to ride with him and his his Hummer and he was really cool just me and him hanging out back to the set. Nice. He was, great. He was a super cool dude. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you guys remember a movie and I I used to love this movie when I was little, it, Enemy Mine? Oh yeah. We should, I love, love that movie. Yeah. Remind me of that yeah. movie. Lou had got Lou it's, Gossip Jr. Yep. And Dennis Quaid. And Dennis Quaid. Yeah. And they like both they're like fighting and then they both wreck their ships on this little you so know. So they're enemies. They're yeah, they're one's enemies. an one's an alien and then Quaid's a human. Mm-hmm. I gotta watch yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's something that I wish the world could do. Sorry to cut you off, Gabe, because there's a delay. So but anyway, I, I think that it absolutely if our world could be like enemy mind where all the enemies that hate each other can get together on a personal level without politics involved. And, you know, can't we all just get along, you know, but that was yeah. a badass movie. Enemy mind. Yeah. Dude. I, I used I to check those little green fuck little weird things that they ate. I always mm. thought they looked delicious. Like as <laughs> I was like, I wish I could just grab one of them. Just like, and just like hook me up. They you know, it's it's kind of cheesy the effects and stuff, mm-hmm. and, and the sets, but it's it's just cool. I just, yeah. Scott Barry not, said, "What about the last Starfighter?" Dude, oh. I watch that all the time upstairs really? in the theater room. I yeah, that it. that was good. I have that on Blu-ray actually. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's cheesy effects. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, it's rough, but it was, back bad. then it was just a good movie. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Albert says, uh, "Back to the Future One is considered a perfect yeah. film." As far as storytelling, pacing, it's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree, but I, what I'm saying is that out of the three, Part Two is my favorite. Y- yeah, my my favorite. Even though I know Part One is still right. good, still great. That's that's like what do you mean still oh, great. What do you mean still great? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> well, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, oh. PJ. <laughs> okay, you, you start. With, I mean, Back to the Future Two is your favorite, right? Mm-hmm. But the original is just is great. I mean, yeah. come on, dude. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's it completely is. I mean, the problem I don't, with that, the future I don't is that understand it's a big story. So it's but like I. It's it's a story that was made up after Back to the Future One. They tried to make just like one, two, and three. No, and it ended to be continued. Now, yeah, but it, what? Why? What of the story of Back to the Future Two? Do you? The story and Lee, I'm talking to you, bro. Why? <laughs> what is so good about that? that I don't understand. I, I just it's it's, just, it's it's the concept of going into the future. Future, right? yeah, like re, like, like living up to the, the name. Yeah. yeah, it's like going to the past is like all right, cool. Like anyone could do that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, not not really, but you yeah. get what I'm saying. Like they yeah. they're you're just seeing stuff that we're used to seeing but yeah. going to the future, future and future seeing your cars floating you know skateboard like that and, as a kid was cool as hell and seeing your future self with your kids right right because you know because now you're like going to the past to see your parents like i don't want to see you know, for me at least i don't want to see my yeah. parents yeah, and then your mom's trying to hook up with you <laughs> yeah like i don't want that like that was like ah oh, <laughs> man but like you know one thing though about back to the future that no one uh, no other movie can do is actually get the back like the the time travel timelines right because yeah. i always say that whenever you do a time travel show or movie you got to have your all all your eggs in a row man you got to get your cross your teeth dot your eyes right because <laughs> like you know with the avengers end game like they try to do the the, the <laughs> time travel thing and that was like a I'm Scott. It's an S show. That was an S show. No. I was like, oh my God. 
You know, and they even had to say, oh, this is not like Back to the Future kind of, you know, they made a reference to that. Yeah, yeah. It's like but, interdimensional. So it's yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. oh, that's creating this. Uh, it was just too much. Like Back yeah. to the Future is like your standard time traveling movie. Like that is your gold standard. But see, that's why, that's why the first one, it's like, yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's easy to understand. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, you got a time machine. You're going to go back into the past and then you come back. But then Back to the Future Part 2 threw in this wrench that says, like, wait a second. When you go back and you fuck something up, it splits (laughs) it into two timelines. Mm -hmm. And now you're running two parallel futures. And now you got to go back and fix that parallel future to go back into the original. Dude, that mind-blowing freaking, like, concept, right? Let's just throw up Armando's comment and let's end the show. (laughs) <laughs> okay. we, gotta, we gotta end we gotta end with like <laughs> literally the back to the future theme. well we've got a countdown we've got one minute before the time yeah, know, right? yeah. yeah we are. but no seriously before we we log off thank you michael thank Great you Gabe. this is a lot of fun <laughs> oh love sure. to have you guys on, on on our show whenever you guys oh are absolutely yeah, yeah that'll be that would be fun yeah, yeah, it's good to finally have Sean on too. So yeah, yeah, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for reaching out, Michael. Yeah, yeah. man, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, did we, talk to you today. Yeah, we definitely got to get you guys on. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it actually jumped to like. Wow. How does it feel? How does it feel, Sean and TJ? Oh. Just travel a few times. I want to go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to bed. It actually, you know, it's weird because it, when I was looking at the time clock, it actually changed. Like it was, it didn't know what to do. It actually, really? it, it, it actually hit six. Wow. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mine actually, mine went up to eleven. Wow. Mine, mine still says one hundred one. Huh. <laughs> You got that's because you got one of those old phones, bro. Oh yeah, just yeah. kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got uh, <laughs> you got one of those Obama phones. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we call that's what we call them in the in uh, the criminal in the criminal law because remember that they passed that law where everyone got cell phones. But anyways, all our clients have. Those oh, phones. that's funny. But guys, thank you, PJ and Sean. Thank you. This was a blast. Definitely, yeah, man. Work. It was definitely one of our longer shows. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this was great. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Anytime you let us know, we'll be there, guys. If you haven't subscribed to Sithcast, make sure you do it. Like I said, the link is down below. And uh, yeah, uh, can't wait to to see if, if it, PJ. If you go to celebration, see you there. Sean, I'm sure we're going to run into each other. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get Michael to go to Nashville so we can yeah. meet up and get his Anthony yeah. Daniel signature. Yeah, that way I'm not going to be – because I don't want to be in any lines at Celebration, to be honest. Yeah. With you. I'm telling you, you get the VIP tickets, That's 350 people only on Friday. Yeah, so you probably get idea. some FaceTime with them. Yeah. There you go. All so, right, right, guys. Well, All right. All everybody, right. thank you. Michael. All right, guys. Bye. Great show. Great show, guys. Love you, bro. Right. Right. I had it. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go.